left and they just have to try and save these rifles but that's the kind of round that Fnatic puts in and LGV I mean they they thought this was going to be the comeback moment because if they start winning now I mean even just winning one one or two rounds here is going to put them right back and basically at a tight scoreline now instead Fnatic come really close to winning because they're not just going to be at 13 here LGB just spent all their money on this stuff. They're probably going to bounce up to 14 rounds Fnatic. Doesn't mean LGB can't win it back, but it's it's um, it's starting to look a lot worse. They still have... Okay, yeah, there we go. Instant force. Instant force. No time wasted at all. I'm surprised that they don't give... Um, that they, they don't actually just let Rain... Well, Rain didn't quite have enough of the FAMAS and armor. Okay, so... Just trying to make the money go work as best as possible here. Zevis is going to take the hit. But Zevis isn't really going for the frags right now. He's the one calling the shots on the team. So it's not the end of the world if he's just got the 5-7. He needs the rest of his team to be just as, as well equipped as possible right now. No luck over at long for JW. He did have the one opportunity. It looks like they're going to want to try and see if they can get a little bit into the middle here. Grenade. Oh, wow. Mm. Not sure what that grenade is meant to do. That HE is meant to ruin Zevis' day. And the wall bang as well. Zevis just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Oh, Jacob, that's the bomb as well. Down, what a huge recovery from him. Grenade out into the middle, and it's going to be a triple kill. Now, Floschka and Olaf Meister left and over at long, actually. Olaf Meister's patiently waiting. We'll win the fight against Rubino, but... 1v3 for Olaf Meister shouldn't be an issue from here on out for them to make it work. They don't really have to fight him, especially not alone. They should, mm -hmm. they should set up around the bomb and use that as the bait for Olaf Meister and just worry about that. Let's see the nade. Yeah, it's not good. I mean, this Olaf Meister took too much damage from Rubino as well. That could have been much cleaner. Yeah, and instead, I agree. Rubino was able to get off a little bit of damage, and that's going to make the difference here, despite the fact that Rain is literally on one HP right now. Jacob, though, I mean, Jacob made the difference for LGB. And I wanted to mention him in the same sentence as Rain as well, but didn't really have time earlier. Jacob is also just this. This guy with ridiculous aim and not a lot of experience on land as well. I believe Pantameta was his first yeah. international land where they actually traveled. He was able to go to a competition and compete versus international teams, not just Norwegians. And man, he really, I think he really showed, a, you know, he had a good performance, a good solid performance that day. But this guy's aim is ludicrous. And we're seeing that yeah. now versus Fnatic. That grenade that was thrown in the middle, I'm wondering if it was sort of meant to break the Noah Tower. Like, if it was meant to hit someone there, but it's too high up, as far as I can tell. It, I'm not sure what it's meant to do. I think it's, uh, maybe bungled it, because I saw one nade. The one nade that I saw worked perfectly. It went to the angle, right, to the corner, going up to B-slope. Yeah, yeah, but there was another one that was thrown, like, directly Over into it. the skybox, and then, like, supposed to bounce back oh. down. Well, we're missing some action here. Rubino is going to become two kills. Polly with one. Oh, what a one shot from Flusher. He's looking for more. Three bullets left. Two, one, zero, and that's going to get you killed. <laughs> Polly with a triple here, but um, the two of them were opening shots, and that's huge. Look at the score. I mean, this is actually really interesting here. Um, on LGB side, it's 20-20 for Polly and Rain, 23 for Rubino, which is hugely impressive. Jake him on 15, and then 5 on Savis. He's doing the in-game leading as well, the calling. Uh, so maybe falling a little bit behind here. But in spite of that, they've forced an eco on Fnatic. This is 13-11, and they actually have... They're within striking distance of taking this game. They definitely could. Yep. And I, yeah, this is the thing. Going into this map, we certainly had more confidence for LGB. Seeing as how Dust2, CT side, you have the pushes if they go your way. I mean, things can start looking very good indeed. So right now, I mean, this is looking like LGB are going to be able to shut this down. Jacob is going to have another opportunity to shine if they start to come through mid doors. My prediction for this game was 16-11, by the way. So uh, assuming that they don't screw this up, LGB. Uh -huh. Uh, they're gonna be like they will always have already have uh, you know impressed me and uh, that's always good. Polly to take down Pronax and it's looking good right now for the Norwegian team. Yeah, this is just now they just have to keep their cool. They've got that man advantage. The push is coming in through mid. JW just trying to put the pressure on there with the Tech Nine, looking to spray him through the smoke, but Jacob just steps right through casually, takes him out. Krim's still able to get it. And Rain, though, is alive on his B slope. He's going to get overwhelmed by the Tech Nine. Just the pressure coming out right now from this pistol and Fnatic. Are they actually going to win an eco round? No, Polly catches flush before he can get through those doors. Yeah, good stuff from Polly there. The double kill bomb does go down, which is actually a big victory for uh, for Fnatic. Crims looking through the door and will take down Rubinos and out to 1v1. Polly, man, he saved this team, but not this time. Crims doesn't allow him through, and it is going to be a triple. Does that mean, like, a Fnatic playing to make my prediction come true, do you think? Oh, man, did they hear you? They said, okay, <laughs> we can't let Anders down. 
I actually think something really weird happened. It looked like Fnatic were trying to exchange pistols, either that or they were trying to like throw the pistol out as like a fake and then just like, you know, like a grenade. Either way, I it didn't work like Fnatic intended, but it looked like it worked in the sense that the LGP player that was there got so confused about what was going on, like, what are you guys doing? Are you like <laughs> and then they just all charged out and the tech nines were too much. That was um, a really weird situation. Flesha in particular, I think, landed two very key kills there. On rain and then on the man holding a window, <coughs> I believe that was Zevas. Uh, LGB moving up here, Polly, what an angle here. C set 75 to get the kill, and that's gonna be JW going down. Nobody watching on short either. Crims just let that right through. Rubino takes out Olafmeister over at long and good stuff right now. This is this is a force out of LGB as well. This is a real problem here. Fnatic need to get the damage done. Jacob's gonna drop the bomb carrier. Crims is too late. Polly gets another headshot, drops Crims down to 9 HP. This is so close. How is LGB managing to get back into this? Fnatic leaving gaps in the defense, and LGB are pouncing on them. Yeah, Fnatic just, I don't know. It looked like they got caught sleeping a couple of times then. I mean, again, they just they, they assume that they can just go somewhere and set up and, and get ready, and then all of a sudden LGB just uh, pounce on them. Go through CT spawn up here, which is actually very un unusual. That's probably going to catch Rubino a little bit off guard here, because it is a little bit strange, especially if they let Crims take the uh, the attention first. But Flusher here yeah, walking up right behind, and that's a great opening. Now it's going to be rough. Now, do they want to try and plant for long and put Flusher down there, or are they just going to play it in the site? And it seems like in the site's the call for them. Man, Pronax is sixth sense, really just kicking in there. Flusher even spotting the man out. Zev is taking quite a bit of damage there in CT. But this is, this is just fanatic, man. With that call going right where they needed to. Flusher with the lurk. And now he's going to go for the peekaboo. Catches him out. Instant headshot on rain. And now it's all down to Zevas. He picks off Crims, but Flusher's still alive on this site. And Flusher just playing the boxes and gets the crouch spray. Zevas already having taken damage earlier. Just not enough HP to last. And Fnatic are now on match point. Oh, man. LGB so close so many times. That one round where it was an eco where they lost it, even though Polly did his best to pick someone off with the smoke, that would have put them at the, at a really decent scoreline. What, 12, 13 at that point? From there on out, it's it's not that far of a victory, but now it seems like a completely different story. Pistol, armor, a couple of grenades here. And Fnatic are feeling it. JW, what? UMPing his way up into the A-bomb site? What is going on? Seriously, are they like they heard that it looks like as well. You have all of LGB collapsing on this A site right now. He's the only one here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, he takes one, keeps spraying. That's a double kill with the UMP. He has time to reload. He's not even taking that much damage. He will eventually go down. The rest of Fnatic are gonna go for it, even though the whole LGB team is essentially here, but they just have so much equipment to fight with, and LGB definitely don't. Getting picked up from behind. Sevis leaving Brain and Polly. Oh no. I cursed them. He's got or, JW's ump. Or, or a blessed fanatic, I'm not sure which. He can take out Crims here. Crims is low. But it's not gonna happen. Flush him with the HE that he sends over the wall. That's disgusting. Oh man. I maybe maybe Fnatic were listening to what I was saying. 16-11 is the scoreline at the end here. Good double kill there from from JW. But um they had some moments of of not respecting LGB and it mm. it could have cost them the match to be fair. Yeah. They no. could have this could have been LGB taking it. It could have gone just all LGB yeah. right there, especially after losing the pistol like that. In such a weird fashion as well, just feeding themselves into Polly with the USP. I mean Polly, yeah. if you get like he is good enough. Well we saw how close it was. And it's not the throw, it's not the throw Zevas under the bus, but I think that that was the difference, is the fact that Pronax on Fnatic's side, yeah. he's in the high teens with his frags, and everybody on Fnatic is in the high teens, if not the 20s. El everybody on LGB, all f like, or four members, yeah. barring Zevas, you know, high double T, high, high teens into the 20s, and then Zevas was like five frags at the end of the, at the, end of the map, and that's... Yeah. I, I, you know, it's not the throws that was under the bus, no, but, but I, I mean, kind of am. Like, yeah, but sometimes that is the case. And sometimes, you know, you just have one guy who has like the, a little bit of an off day. Yeah. I'm sure Seven is going to be, uh, you know, is going to be blaming himself as well. It happens. That means LGB are going to be playing Hellraisers and mm -hmm. Fnatic are going to be playing Envy. And both of those games, guys, are best of threes and they're tonight. Next game is, um, is going to be Hellraisers and uh, LGB. Yeah. Really, really cool match, I think. No, that's going to be entertaining. I think there's going to be a bit more of an even match between the two teams, yeah. so... We'll be back, uh, guys, after this break, and we'll be getting into that first best of three of the night.
right. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the FPSlogger.com Bjorn Borg Challenge. And uh, we've got LGB playing Fnatic. Best of three. No, not LGB playing Fnatic. LGB playing Hellraisers. In a best of three. It's a losers match. Because uh, Hellraisers, they lost to Envy. Mm -hmm. LGB lost to Fnatic. Although that was a closer game and a more fun one. Now they're going to play each other best of three. And I think this is going to be a much more entertaining match for all of us. I, I hope think so. that this will be, in the end, a much more even match. Yeah. Because clearly Hellraisers weren't on point. Adrian himself, you know, he's not a big fan of Baguette, but, you know, he got it that time. <laughs> and so, you know, the way that it goes is that Hellraisers, they just got beat down in their first match. LGB put up a bit more of a fight, but I really do think that's because Fnatic weren't taking them seriously. They and tried not to... Uh they tried not to get some of those Swedish meatballs. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the thing, man. And the brown sauce, no. Oh. Just wasn't going to happen this time. All right. Well, so. if Hellraiser's win, I don't know what they, what, what's like What's like a classic CIS region food. I don't know. I should stay more educated because um, <clears throat> I honestly don't know. Well, what do you think? What do you think? Uh, because we have Inferno Mirage and Dusters, the maps. Yeah, um, I don't know. Inferno, I could see Hellraiser's winning that one. Got to reload um, the gun real quick. Yeah, I, th uh, I don't know. Actually, good. Hellraiser's are pretty good on Mirage, too. This is actually a pretty good uh, map pick, I think, for Hellraiser's. Um, but I'm going to go with LGB to win it. I still think they're better. Yeah? Yeah. I th there's too much strangeness going on on Hellraiser's side. I think whenever Hellraiser's win anything... It comes down to like individual players mm. going like nuts, and we, Doja is a very good player. And when when he drops, you know, three four kills per round, then Hellraiser is definitely winning. But you can't really rely on that. That's but that's too sketchy. That's the main thing here is what I'm wondering, Anders. You know, I know you shouldn't point weapons at people, but um, basically, are Hellraiser is going to be able to feel a bit more confident going up against LGB? Because maybe there was a bit of a they just couldn't get the start, and then they were never able to get into the game, and Fnatic just never let up. Do you think LGB are going to be able to give more of an opportunity to, to Hellraiser's to shine? Yeah, but I don't think confidence is Hellraiser's big problem. Mm. I think, actually, they're, like, they're like irrationally confident in their own abilities to, to, like, to like fight anyone, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's because, individually, they almost can. Like, they are very, very good. It's not just Doja. Angel has had like some crazy games as well. The Flamey is obviously very good. They have the individual talents to do it, so they should be feeling confident in the way. But somehow it's not just it's not the same. I think no. LGB can take this, and I think it's going to be two zero as well. Okay, I'll go. I'll back That's my bet. I'll back that. But be sure, guys, to check out FirstPersonLover.com. <coughs> That's of course uh, the fashion brand that is uh, Bjorn Borg putting on the uh, putting on this tournament here. So be sure to check out the site, play the game, yeah. test your speed skill, like speed running skills. Yeah, against Summer and I. Yeah, man, because we're up there. Both got around 25 minutes there. You're ahead of me, though, man. I've got... By, uh, like, two minutes. Yeah. And I did get to see you start first, so I had, like, a little bit of an edge. Yeah. So I was um, learning. It was, yeah. it was a fun game, actually. Surprisingly fun. I started having a bit... Because the weapons aren't too bad, actually. You figure out that the shotgun, this gun right here, is actually pretty good. Yeah. Right? So you kind of just, like, stun, shotgun, and then L just kind of, like, plow little through. Little tip, conserve your ammo. Yeah, I um, I nearly, I nearly tore the keyboard in half of the boss fight. Though. That was really, <laughs> dude, really. Wow, dude, when I went up against Putin. <coughs> yeah, yeah, that's interesting. You fight, you're fighting Putin at the end of the teams. Well, we're gonna go into it here. LGB, they get start on the slightly more favored side here, and uh, if they can with the pistol, then good news to them. But they're fighting, what? Two deagles and three Glocks. It's a very CIS thing as well. This buying deagles I in the in don't the pistol. Even know what to think. <laughs> um, it's going to be smoke and flashbangs on Adrian as well. He's all the way over in the apartment, so it's going to probably take a while. Could see them ending up at B, and if they do, leaving Flamey behind at A, it can work. But they get the opening. That's great. Doja, the Deagle, man. It comes into play. Jacob will get a return kill, and then they're going to fall back just a little bit. If they get Polly inside here, they should move quick on this A bomb site. Open it up for the incoming bomb as well. Rain rotating in here. Good angle. Polly, though. Not hitting the shots, and he's going to get flashed out. Well, Rain inside, and then Polly. A little bit of backup, and he's going to step it up majorly. Gets the headshot on Flamey, and it's a 2v4 right now. 1v3 is as though he's just the last man standing, and he's being chased down. But look at this restraint on Rain. He's not going all in. He's just sort of using the box for cover, and now they're all going to peek him, and Rain will get the kill. That's actually very nice to see, because Rain could have could have had the confidence then to just say, all right, I'll just go and man fight him, but 
He actually played it very safe all the way up to the end. So smart playing. No, no, it was more of a kitten fight, really. Yeah. You know, small little scratches all along, and that, that it, eventually that war doja down. <clears throat> I mean, those kittens, man, they they can be relentless. You know, I'm telling you, we had like ten of them at the good studio at one point. You had to fear for your life at certain points there, man. When Chinese eating, torture, death by a thousand blades, <laughs> death by a thousand kitten claws. <laughs> Like, those things are vicious. So, I mean, I'm thinking, you know, Rain, he channeled his inner kitten. He got the job done. And LGB, that was actually just, you know, all joking aside, that was just perfect play, as you say, man. Kept himself alive, waited for the rotation to come in from the B site. And at that point, they took the fight as three. There was nothing Doja could do at that point. Even if Doja gets one, he's not getting out of there alive. And now Rubino, pro 90, but he gets run and gun. The crouch spray. Rain is still here, however, and they decide to still peek him. He almost got Kucha there as well. In fact, he will pick up Kucha right here. So that's now a triple for Mars. Still plenty of bullets. He makes it an ace in the end. Rain, Eco Warrior here. Going to be picking up two um, two rounds for LGB. That's really good. 7 0 and 0. Always a respectable scoreline to start off with. Yeah, it looked like Hellraiser could have had that opening. I mean, once you get that opening, Frank, you know you're onto something. But yeah. they kind of ended up fighting a little bit too much at the little pit. Yeah, plenty of money in the bank as well for Rain in that round. So he's going to be very <coughs> pleased. We can see just full equip, full equipment on LGB side. Hellraiser's going for the buy here. No matter what happens, they want to try and catch LGB off guard pretty much. Good dodges on the HEs. And that last one there, I think uh, the roof soaked up a little bit of the damage. Those should probably have uh, taken a bit more there. Still. Yeah, look good. This isn't looking too shabby for LGB. Because Hellraiser's... Okay, they've got rifles, but Adrian's the only man with a the smoke. They have one smoke and three flashes to work with right now. And if they aren't winning the duels, this is going to go south for Hellraisers. What, what, what is the, like, the, the Norwegian national food? Because it's not, it's not going to be meatballs. What, what are they going to get a taste of next? Hmm. I'm trying to think. I want to say, like, fried moose or something, but um, <laughs> it probably isn't, is it? It's probably, it's probably some sort of fish, I'm, I'm sure. I can see that happening. I should know more. Somebody tweeted us what it is. Like our our ignorance of uh, both CIS and Norwegian food is is quite astounding, really. Help us out, guys. In the meantime, they're actually rotating back to A, which seems like it's a really good call. There's been uh, a call for pause as well, so hopefully that's not anybody's disconnecting or anything. They seem to be all on the server and moving around, so hopefully just a minor issue. Good position here from Rubino. Should be able to catch probably one kill and then uh, maybe also stay alive for a little bit. He will get that one on Kucha and then falls back. It's always a really good angle, that one. It's hard to judge exactly when people are going to be there. Rain inside has already spent some bullets here. Takes a long fight and comes out short against Adrian. But there's still so many people here. Not a lot Adrian can do. And he's got no time anyway. If he could have got a bomb hunt, that would have actually been big. But now he's just going to be hiding and saving. And they don't have any ET grenades and service. I think he's too far away with the Molotov anyway. So, not that much of a successful round after all there for, uh, for Hellraisers. <clears throat> it looked like the call to go A was actually a really smart one, though. But um, they just couldn't find that entry frag that they needed. Yeah, they weren't able to get it quick enough. If they were able to pick off Rain initially after he peeked behind the boxes, then maybe they can start just, like, really <coughs> spinning out of control and Hellraisers can get onto that site fast. But the fact that Rain stuck around, you already have the rotation coming in. Even that extra second means the difference between them actually getting onto that site, Hellraisers. So, Hellraisers, I was expecting a bit more out of them, actually. You know, I know it's the beginning of the first map here, but I was expecting a bit more out of them, you know, going up against LGV. Versus what they experienced versus Envy. Yeah, I mean, they, they formed up on Inferno. That's actually true. They've got just a little bit of taste in there. Um, so they, I mean, I think they can, they can still show us a lot more. That round could have worked out for them pretty well. Mm. Um, they just, they didn't get a lot of chance. And they, I mean, the way that they peaked Rubino as well, it was just really just one guy peaking him by the, uh, by the pillar that's in the, in the CT spawn, essentially, by Archway. Yeah, that's always um, such a tough place. Yeah, it's a tough place, and when you peek him alone, that also means Rubino can just walk away. Yeah. Like, if they, had been, if they had been, like, two or three people peeking that angle, maybe Rubino gets one, maybe two if he's extremely lucky, but he at least won't walk away from that situation. He kind of did, so... Um, but that's very much Hellraisers. Again, they take individual fights, and there's not much of a chance for a refrag, and that's, like, one of the most frustrating things about watching them. When it works, they, they just kill everybody all across the map. They win all the fights, and that's it, you know, home safe. It just doesn't feel like it works often enough. No, it doesn't really feel like They never seem to stick it. <clears throat> and uh, this time it's actually Rain opening up and taking down the one rifle they had. Adrian did have rifle armor, now they just have the rifle. So let's see. It's that CIS uh, AK again, man. <clears throat> yeah. 
Going back a long ways. Flashbang out. Zev is going to take the peek, but too they late. were actually ready for that. Yeah, way too slow there by, uh, by Zev. Luckily, Polly is here to plug the gap. He's going just for flat spray. Angel's going to be able to make it past and pick up the M4, however. But then he runs right into rain. Coacher does manage to return a frag. But those is too far away to really have an impact with this AK. This AK would have been huge if Hellraisers had it pushing onto this site. That could have made the difference, but... Now Doja has to go into a 1v3. Holly's gonna spot him out, and no Kevlar means you get aim punch. <laughs> means most likely you're gonna die. It's upsetting even to watch when it happens to someone else, isn't it? You feel like, oh, come on. Yeah. Aim punch. I don't stand a chance. Well, it's still early days for Hellraisers, and they're on the less favorite side, so I'm not too panicked yet. And I don't like the fact that Kucha's picked up an AWP uh, so soon in the half here. Two Molotovs as well. Let's see what they can, uh, what they can you know, make work with it. I wish they would, uh, wish they'd try and do what they did earlier, essentially. Like, push up to B, show yourself there, and then fall back to A quickly. Especially if you have two people already waiting there. If they push in by the time that LGB have three members in, in B, that's mm. a pretty good deal for you. You're going to be happy with that. That means you have a 2v2 going on in A. If you get even one kill, or even just delay long enough for the rest of your three members to come in, they're going to be there before the ter uh, before the CTs will. Like, the rotation time from T-Banana, as opposed to inside the B-bomb site, is way longer for the CTs to get to A than it is for the Ts there. They can be way further back, and it just works better. Well, it's looking like it's going to be an A play here this time around, because Kucher, with this AWP, Hellraisers are clearly <coughs> counting on him to take command of these angles and open up the open up the map, basically. They want to catch somebody peeking on LGB's side. Only problem is, LGB, they're reacting in a very smart way right now. They heard that op shot. Now they know that Kucher could be lurking around here, and the smokes go down, meaning it's kind of safe to move back up again. But... Before that, they know they cannot peek with uh, because they're running the risk of Kutcher picking them off and giving that entry entry frag to Hellraisers. So Hellraisers now, knowing that they aren't going to have any joy over here on the A site, they decide to try and switch it up and go B. But that AWP is not going to be as useful over here. Oh, Ruben with that pick off there. Basically giving away the whole plan that uh, Hellraisers had in mind here. A lot of smokes and flashbang raining into B, but they've got 15 seconds left. At this point, not even Navi would be pleased. So Sevis hiding by Oranges. He's going to take down one, goes for a second one. Good job here on Sevis. He almost gets a third one there. In fact, Kucha very nearly burning alive. Four seconds left. The plant, is it going to go through? Angel is there, and he does put in the last number and then dies very swiftly. Good job from Sevis, who, who a little bit invisible on Dust 2, but you know, he's stepping it up already here. And it's going to give it a 4-0 lead here. 5-0 lead, sorry, in fact, for LGB. So... Good, uh, good job on their part. And I did get an update in the meantime. A lot of people saying that in the national dish in, uh, in Norway, something for called um, Farikol, which I'm guessing is some sort of um, cabbage with, with something else. Um, a lot of people saying some salmon as well. This is, it's, it's not very Scandinavian. It's not very clear yet. It's not very clear. <laughs> Farikol? Farikol? I don't know how to pronounce that. I mean, I should because... Give it to me, give it to me. Maybe I'll do a better job. Yeah, you do a better job. Let me see. I mean, Danish and Norwegian is essentially the same, so I'm probably, like, embarrassing myself. I'm sorry, guys. Forty call? Yeah, there it is. What the hell is that? Whoa, it looks really tasty, though. <laughs> People sending pictures <laughs> as well. No, it's not. Yeah, but it's not call. It's call. It's like K-A-Umlaut-L. Yeah. K -A yeah. All right, we'll get back to that <laughs> in a little bit later. Um, the food talk will continue. Just rounding a minute on the clock here into the sec sixth round, and we'll see if um, Hellraisers can pick up something. They've got the bomber at second mid, and they're all at the middle. This looks like a clear mid push. Um, question is, are they going to get the pick off to go either Arch or Quad? Rain flashing out, just trying to buy a little bit of time, and they have a good setup for this LGB. Jacob going to open up with a pick. Ruben or flashes his way back. With Flamey with a good return kill now. The opening is there, and they got to pounce on it here. Ruben with one kill, goes for a second, and it's a triple kill for the Norwegian player before he finally goes down. No, actually, I think one of them was stolen by Jacob there, so only a double. Doji and Flamey, though, now they're taking a long time, considering that LGB basically know what's up. Yeah, exactly. I'm actually surprised. The, uh, 20 <coughs> seconds. Right now, I'd actually like to see the rotation come out, because there's only one guy here that they've seen. Now they see the second one there. Doji managing to get the drop on him, but Flamey's taking too much damage, and that bomb has dropped too far away. Nine seconds left, and once again, Hellraiser's just running out of time. LGB doing such a good job of running down this clock. It's very clear right now that Hellraiser's, they're looking for entry frags. Like, that's what they're desperately hoping for, that LGB will just give them that first frag. That LGB are playing su doing such a good <coughs> job of peeking, but only peeking very quickly and then falling back to the site, making it so that Hellraiser's have to commit before they can anything can happen for them. 
But then you're running into the likes of Rain, Rubino, Jacob. I mean, these guys are woken up right now. And there you go. Rain just sprays down Kutcher. Does half damage to Angel. I mean, this is pain right now for Hellraisers. It definitely is. And um, they're just not really able to connect there. They get the opening, oh, but no. they also kill Doja. That's a team kill in the middle. Flamey getting a little bit too excited. So, I don't know. One step forwards, one step back. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, this is uh, this isn't looking too hot here now. Hellraisers, I mean, two flashes. They don't even have a smoke for Pit. They have to land this kill on Rubino. Like Rubino, Jacob, they're just holding solid. Jacob in the Pit as well. That's exactly where he needs to be. They don't have anything to get rid of him with. Like they literally have two flashes to get onto this site with. And now the rotation has already come in from Zevez. He's going to be in the perfect position to get the backstab. If Rubino goes down, Zevez needs to pounce. Uh, he is coming in rather quickly. There's still a guy in pit that they have to deal with. Sevens is there. He let one. He lets one guy by, but he's got another chance here. Looking for Angel. Not going to win the battle. Great job on Angel's part here. We are into a 2-1-2. Two, two. 30 seconds. A lot more time this time. But Jacob still doing a lot of damage from down here. And now Angel, he's got to move quick. Or less, you know, backup's going to come in here. It's going to get worse. Second for second. Angel is going to be in a worse position. He walks in here, does get the kill, but then... Holly's shown up, and those are, those are the vital seconds. The moment he has stage just a little bit, and Polly's going to get closer and closer. Rain currently top fragging, but everyone else on LGB doing a pretty fine job. Seven and zero right now. Hellraisers aren't getting a breakthrough right here. No, they are not. And Jacob is the real hero of that round pretty much for LGB. Because Zevez, Zevez was a step too late, and then he missed that duel. He, he lost that duel. So that's the problem. If Jacob dies in the pit, Hellraisers, that's the thing. It's coming down to these single players that are just ruining Hellraisers' rounds. Every time Hellraisers look like they can get an edge, either it's Rain or Jacob or Rubino, they're just there to mess them up. This time around, it was Jacob just staying alive in the pit and allowing for Polly to rotate through. But there's the opening. And there's the headshot. Nice one there by Flamey. Oh, so we will love Zing, and now Jacob's going to come up even bigger than last time, because there's a lot of people coming, but they are really not that fast again. They should be way quicker than this on the Hellraiser side. Excellent grenade, going to bring Adrian down to 20 health, and Jacob is just proving a real uh, real troublemaker down in pit. Flamey got picked off here as well. Ruben are not controlling the spray, so it's going to be up to Polly again. Hellraiser's making their way through this time. Good job on their part. Could be the first round for them here. Yeah, I think this heavily favors Hellraiser's at this point. <coughs> <clears throat> Polly's only got the AWP as well. He's so far away. I'm actually not really pleased with Polly and how long it's taking him for, to, for him to rotate over to that A site. Like every, every time it seems like he could be there five seconds earlier, but he's just still sitting over on the B site. And now so much time has burned off this clock. He might as well back up now. Just save the AWP at this point because you're not going to get it done, Polly. No, I agree. Not really going to happen. Shot in the back as well. <clears throat> and AWP surrendered to the terrorist side. But it's always really hard to know in those situations whether or not it's Polly being a little bit um, out of the loop or if he's getting a call from his teammate saying, don't rotate yet, we don't know what's happening. Yeah. Uh, like, it, that's that's really, really hard to judge. But it does seem like he's a little bit late, um, whether it's his fault or someone else's. Well, we'd have to listen to the team speak and also be able to understand Norwegian. Or actually, Danish. All of these LGB guys speak Danish really well, which I'm impressed by. Well, they all live in Denmark, don't they? Yeah. Like, Zevez so. lived there, Rubino lives there now. <clears throat> yeah, it, was, it, it freaked me out the first time. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> What's happening? See, that's the thing, man. Half the time I forget that you are Danish, Anders. And then you start talking on the phone, and I'm like, what? <laughs> it happens every time, too. Yeah, I was weirdly, last time I was on the plane home, I was sitting next to a girl who said I sounded Australian. Which I was like, well, all right. <laughs> <laughs> she was from Chicago, so I don't know if that's the thing. Oh, well, there you go. There's your reason, then. Polly looking down the middle. And she, oh, he's going to go down. Nice peek from Kucha. That's the kind of opening they need now. This is where most teams should be able to, to just get a little bit more info. If they force them back top banana, well, then they will have done really, really a good job. And they can just peek around the corner in there and spot out whoever is. I can't actually see who that is. Is that Sevis? Yeah, Sevis holding. Mm -hmm. I'd say B right now is a really good pick. When you're a man up, B is always uh, a good uh, site to hit. It's a good place to be right now. There's a rotation coming out as well. I believe that's Rain who's starting to work his way through Speedway. Problem is now Jacob spotted Adrian. He, I think he spotted the bomb, or he should have spotted the bomb there as well. So that should be the instant rotation to come back. Two guys down on the A site, and all the remaining members for Hellraisers are working their way here, but Rubino catches out Angel, and he's going for more. Rain is here. He's going to find Doja. They're just getting picked off one at a time, Hellraisers. 
Essentially, not much of a chance for a refrag here. Kucha pretty much has to run away and save the AWP. There's too much of that going on. The whole concept of uh, grouping up and pushing together somewhere is just not something they favor a lot currently, which is going to put them at a very weird position. Yeah, it's sheep and cabbage, our producer just told us, the four E. Four E. Call? Yeah. I know, I know, I mean, it it's, would be exactly the same word in Danish. I'm just, like, scared to try and say it, but, um... What is it, call? Call? Korv? No. But I thought Korv was, like... Yeah, no, yeah, no, bad. no, it's... No, never mind. Oh, Look, this is, is I will we'll do, like, a... We'll do a whole translation another day. This is going to be way too <laughs> elaborate. <laughs> well, Hellraiser's at least had enough money to go for a buy, which I wasn't even really convinced they would have been. But they could probably end up losing this whole first half if they don't actually win this round. They, there is so much riding on this right now for them. Because it's going to be 10, maybe even 11-1 before they get a chance to do something here again. Unless they start winning. They're up in apartments. But they're going to get found by Jacob. He has that really uh, good angle. Yeah, that is a nasty angle, actually. Right, sitting there in the flatbed <coughs> of the truck. Just yeah. You only can see his head at that point, basically. And if you don't react, he's got your whole body there. It's going to be brutal. So now, once again, Hellraiser is looking like they want to take this towards the A site. They do have some gear to work with this time, at least. They have three smokes still, two Molotovs. So there are some options here to try and force LGB out into the open or block them off. Now do Hellraisers find the opportunity because they've got 35 seconds left now. Good stuff from Kucha. Getting the return of Frank. Two people in pit and 30 seconds is just not a lot. Flamey's getting in here, but if they notice the bomb, and if the bomb drops out on quad, then the whole thing can fall apart here. Flamey getting the... Oh, not getting the kill. Doja coming through with one. But again, the clock is so low. Hellraisers, it's the same story over and over again. Doja wants to make his way into the site, and he's at least going to get the bomb on this time, but it's too late. He's trapped inside. Fire rains in on him. He has to move, and Jacob being a hero inside the pit there. Going to have to wait for the fire to disappear, but they've got plenty of time for it. Actually, <laughs> look at Polly. Man, good triple from Jacob. Yes, yeah. Jacob is really playing very well right now. That's, it is, it is, watching Hellraisers, it really feels like watching five people who have all decided to play their own individual game. They just happen to be on the same side, on the same server, on the same team, but... But they're sort of all, you know, playing like, I will, I've decided to go and find a frag somewhere. Mm -hmm. You guys do whatever you want, but I'll do that. No, it really is that. <clears throat> I mean, it's almost as if they're trying to embody, like, Nip or Envy or somebody. I mean, there's, even there, there's some kind of structure. There's some kind of communication. It just doesn't seem like Hellraisers have that going for them at all right now. Yeah, look at this setup. This is what I'd, I'd love to see more stuff like Hellraisers. Like, flashbang, smoke in, and run. Like, e e this is, like, the most basic stuff that you could probably pull on Inferno. But there's a reason why people do it, and it's because it's, it quite often works. Polly gonna be got one kill, misses the next shot, flashbang is over. Now, if they can just speed up behind this, there's a real chance here. Doja gets the kill, Polly smoked off. Look at the success rate already. Yeah, this is very this, solid work. This has to be written up in the Hellraiser's log right now as a successful push. Even if they don't win it, because they only have pistols, it's really hard to win from here on out. But still, great job. Two kills, including an AWP. They got the bomb down, they still in the rifle. Really good stuff. Adrian goes down, sadly, and Doja here can't hold his sight. But still, if they do this with rifles, man, I love it. I just want to see more of it. Yeah, it comes down to Polly missing that second shot as well. I mean, I believe it was Doja who was able to make a pass and then take out Zevez. Zevez wasn't able to land a headshot on him. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a couple of things that happened there that allowed for Hellraisers to get in, but they should definitely attempt B site. I mean, clearly they're not getting any joy on the A site. So the fascination there should, uh, should be changed up. Let's see here what Hellraisers do now, though, because of that plant on that eco, now they have all the money they need, although Kucher is still going glass cannon, so that's going to be painful for him if he gets into a firefight. But really, Kucher isn't... Oh, well, I cursed him, Anders. Yeah, that was almost like an Olaf Meister level shot, um, like he did over at Pantomero. He, he got a really, really keen headshot um, off on someone jumping past there with the AWP. This time, not so cool for Kucher. They lose the entry frag, but they could bring it back. And right now, it's cool if they just play for get to get the refrag on somebody. 
and they could do it together, but if they have someone they trust, I mean, that guy can try and try and work for a, for a refrag as well. Very nice. And you see them all pre-aiming that spot that Rubino was playing from. Now Rubino's going to be avoiding that. And you can see it. He immediately backs off, changes up, changes up his angle. Right now, if they commit, Rubino has a shot. Now he spots him out, and he still loses the duel. Rubino did everything right, but Angel just managed to land the shot first there. Nicely done by Angel. Now that they're in an even position again, now they need to start working together. They kind of had to take a risk to get to this position, but now they got to really make this work. Polly, not going to catch anyone. It's going to be all up to Rain. But, you know, having one guy alone here against four people, it, Rain is not a bad uh, person to have left. Rain is the perfect person to have here, actually. Molotov is going to force him out into the open. However, he spots them going for the boost, though. Too much given, and he's going to get two kills. This is the difference. Rain will lock this site down single-handed. He's going for the fourth one, while well, a triple kill in the end, but that is just a sick performance from Rain. Keeping his cool, getting out of the flames, not over committing, just getting out into the open. As soon as he spots him, just locks it down. Yeah. I'm wondering if they took too long staying in CT spawn and, and outside as well. If they if they all just group up. I mean, maybe they didn't exactly realize that there was only rain in here. Maybe they mm -hmm. thought there was going to be another guy construction or something, so they wanted to, to try and play it a little bit safely, but... Oh, it's, it's painful because that was a good comeback from Hellraisers into the round to begin with. This time they pick up Polly and they are going to speed up. And I think speed is the key right now. Savis goes down. Great entrance from Hellraisers. Absolutely perfect. This time, no hesitation. Oh. But Rubino, he almost killed two that way. And they're wow. close spraying through the grenade. Oh, it's going to be a touchdown. Not quite. They barely live. I think they got out and dodged then. But that could have been, been a double kill with the grenade. Oh, that's a great smoke going down the block off construction. Jacob, he's going to try and light it up. Force them out into the open. He gets spotted on the edge, however. Good angle there by Doja. But now Rubino should... No, Doja doesn't even give him the chance to react. Rain, however, it's his time to shine again. But they're backing off into construction. And this is the right move from Hellraisers. Just play the angle. He has to get on that bomb. And there's two of them. They can peek him at the same time. Why are they running out one after the other? There's I not going to be enough time. Rain is holding it. And <laughs> Edren is going to come in and take him out so he goes up with the bomb and it's a bit sad for hellraisers because the one round they win everybody dies yeah meaning if they lose this upcoming round it's probably gonna be um Curtains. 13 to, to 2 for lgb it's already a good score line like 11 4 would still be pretty good for lgb considering hellraisers are supposed to be doing better on t side here but um right now they're not i do like the fact that they they managed to sort of speed up behind the initial frag they got i think that's really good no, no more hesitation on their side really and LGB is still able to put together a decent buy, so this isn't too bad, actually. This is going to be the biggest round of the half, practically, because it's the difference between life or death here for Hellraisers. They need four rounds. So this is it. Now is their time to shine. They've got the grenades. They're going to just go straight for a site this time because they are very limited. No smokes. The flashes, and they're just running right into the blender. Rain with the double spray down. Jacob waiting a pit. Catches Adrian trying to get out of the apartments. And that pretty much ends it. Flamey, Coacher running away, and Jacob hears he, he heard that. The thing is, they can't even run away and hide at this point because there's so much time left on the clock. That's now a triple for Rain going for the quad, but not quite going to pick it up. So, <clears throat> last man standing, Kucha, 1v4. And um, it looks like that 13-2 to two score line is very likely at this point. Rubino with the final pickoff and... Annihilation. Yeah, they just don't have any money here. This is definitely a slaughter, yeah. And the rise of Scandinavian Counter-Strike, pretty much, man. The LGB are just looking very good right now. And yeah, and I mean, <clears throat> the thing is, there is actually enough talent in the Norwegian team to pick up, like, a second team. You could do that. Like, they're probably missing Mock, Hoyland, Skirk, um, yeah. Sentries out there somewhere as well. Like, there's Ensa, who was previously in this LGB lineup. You could make a, a secondary team, which that would be really powerful. Um, so, yeah, why not go for it? Jacob? Well... <laughs> <laughs> Did he do a double take into bedroom thinking, can I make this? Can I go for the peaceful option and just run? But that was never going to be the case here. Adrian with a good pick off. Second kill comes in on Rubino. Great stuff here. The tech nine. That's the answer. Flashbang out and he does steal a rifle. They should get the bomb plant down though. It's going to actually take a long time here. Angel trekking his way over through apartments. That total lack of fear, man. But Zevez misses the read he could have had the perfect timing to ruin hellraiser's day there because that bomb making its way out of apartments he would have been in position to catch him on the balcony instead now zevez he's going to have to wait for Polly to rotate over from that b site there is already the triangle of doom set up here on this a site hellraiser's 
All they have to do is play it patient. <laughs> yeah. And Adrian's like, no, nope, I have no patience. I'm, I'm just going to try and go for it. And he did get the kill, so that's what's... I mean, you're right. I think you, they should have paid, played patiently. They don't have to fight at all here. But Angel going to get the last kill in 12-13. So they managed to save just a little bit at the end. But uh, it's nowhere near an acceptable half for uh, for Hellraisers here. And Rain picking up, what, 23 kills in 15 rounds? Damn. Yeah, damn, son. That's that's <coughs> impressive. Polly and Zev is not really sitting on too many frags. They did, they really didn't see too much action over on the uh, B site. And when they did, they kind of just got nixed. So that's, uh, that's the main thing. Hellraiser's just deciding to run into the three strongest players on LGV round after round. And that's, uh, that's going to be a, a bit of a brutal uh, situation. But now we swap sides. Hellraiser's on the CT side, LGV on the T side. In this pistol, and Doja goes running right up into bedroom and picks off Rain to start. That's an excellent kill. That's the first man you want to get off the map for the Nords. Oh, definitely. With him out of the way, they're going to keep going anyway. Adrian, nice mid-air shot there, trying to reload. Doja helping out a little bit, and Jacob goes down. So it's all on Rubino. 1v4, and it's not going to work. Doja with a quad kill at the end here with the pistol. Great round from him. And that's the power. That's the power that they have within this team. Doja is not the only one. I'd say Flamey is a good candidate, and like, they just they have the players. They just don't have the cohesion to make it work. Now they're buying three MP9s. What is this madness? What is this madness? It's almost like Hillary is saying, we want to take like the the largest risk we possibly can, because in, in a fight between Tech 9 and MP9, I'm definitely picking the MP9 or the Tech 9, sorry. And here we go. Tech 9 with the first kill here. They're trying to charge on up. They've done damage to rain. They can actually do this, and they're burning alive back there. Hellraiser is setting up a nice trap, but Doja will go down. That was Sevis finding a kill. Now they're in a weird position. Up in apartments, Adrian is basically controlling the fate of Hellraiser on this map. Great kill for him to get, though, and he still makes it out of there alive. That should not have happened. No. How did he only take that little damage? That angle he was playing was just, it worked so well. They're going to get the bomb plant, however. So LGB, they should be pleased with that. They get two kills, they get a bomb plant. Not too bad for a second round. So it's not the end of the world, but I definitely think that Adrian, he can count his lucky stars right there, man, because he should have gone down in that scenario. He did luck out, kind of, and pick up the pick up the one with the most health. Health, rather. Yeah. But um, for the rest of LGB to miss the shot on him, to not get that kill on Adrian, that was definitely a mistake. Yeah, that looked a little bit uh, weird there. But good stuff from Hellraisers. I mean, they are starting to pick up a couple of rounds here, and who's to say they can't make it back? And, uh, and do some sort of comeback. They they have had good results on Inferno in the past, so wouldn't be without precedence. Now, LGB obviously going to be for, uh, sort of echoing this round. They've bought a couple of pistols, but that is pretty much it. Nothing too exciting to, to talk about yet. But if Hellraisers get really close to the edge here and somehow the right flashbang comes through, I mean, they can still lose control, so got to be a little bit careful at least. Oh. Not really doing the damage. Nice flash, though. Flamey falling back. Flamey deciding to hold his ground. He's going to get the triple again. Flamey and Angel just go into town, locking down this B site. Angel still alive, and he gets run and gunned. What? Wow, Polly, what are you yeah, doing? Yeah, boy, give Polly a pistol. He's, he's going to surprise you. That was really, really cool, especially that last kill coming in. That was really fast and great game sense as well, because you just instantly realized there could have been someone here already. The timing is for it. Now he's in the back and still in a very tough position. It's looking for an ace here to win this eco. He's going to get one more kill. Adrian coming through. Polly's ready. He's just waiting in the background here. He's got the tech nine. Now the grenade finishes it. Oh, Adrian. That's almost heartless. Should have given him a fighting chance there, but that's still very impressive. Polly is stepping it up so much today. Yeah, he is really. I mean, <clears throat> what he did versus Fnatic this round right here. That was sick. And the fact that now, I mean, that was way too expensive. Look at Hellraisers. All of their money is gone. Adrian is the only one who has any kind of bank. That was far too expensive for Hellraisers. If LGB win this right here, Hellraisers are going to have their backs to the wall. There is nowhere to back up here. So let's see. I mean, Kucher, once again, going for that AWP. Polly has got one as well. And Polly is burning to death. He has to get out. Ooh. Well, that's painful. But they're going to get the entry fight regardless. And that was up in Apartments, Doja playing, and just to point this out again, I'm not trying to be mean, but Doja's in a position up there where, unless he wins the fight, 
They're just down on man. There's no one there that can refrag that kill. And you can set up an app so that that's possible. You could have a guy in boiler and a guy pushing in, you know, the main corridor of apps, and then you're going to be fine. No. Oh, Adrian, he just barely gets that. I thought he was done for. And actually, Rain, surprised that he did not get that kill, considering all the time that they both had. It's like if a spray lasts as long as a second, you're just like, what is going on? <laughs> that is not supposed to happen. But Especially with the M4A1, it's so accurate. I mean, It is, it is. Um, and that's why I stuck with it, man. PP lasers. But Polly's actually sticking out of tabs with the AWP. That's kind of weird. That's the last guy up there. The Ruben with a good frag there on Angel, but they still got to do something about the guy in sight. I think it's Flamey holding in here. Kucha goes down. It's a 2v3, but look at the health on LGB. Aiden can finish this round so quick that there's 25 seconds left. And he's just looking for the frag. I think he spotted someone over there, and that's going to be the kill on Jacob. Bombs dropped for a second. Good shot from Polly. And now it's all on Flamey. All the way in the back here. 10 seconds left. They flash. And they're going to go for the plant instead of the fight. And they could have probably tried to fight him right there. If now they've run away, and they're just going to leave him. Clever oh. play from LGV. This is so painful now. Well, no. Now it's actually a whole lot better. Flamey doesn't have a kit, though. Is there anywhere? Uh, is there a kit anywhere on this site? Ruben, it doesn't care. There's a triple kill here. Really good round. Surprised that uh, Polly played that close. I am as well. I thought he backed off into the hallway. Yeah, he, he could just be the guy standing around listening. Yep. Waiting and, and seeing if anyone is there. And then call for Ruben if anything really went down. But it is what it is. 13 to 6. And Hellraisers, they go for the uh, AWP. And, and pistol situation, basically. They're just hoping that this one orb can land them some great entry frags, and they're not wrong either. Jacob goes down. Good start. Now they can move Adrian back and try and keep LGB guessing. Yeah, I'm surprised that uh, Kutra isn't actually going to be the one who's... He, he might pass that off to Kutra right now. But he's decided to hold on to it. Flamey. He's looking for that AK. They're trying to spray on, perhaps trying to keep him off of it. But they cannot quite get the angle right. Angel now could return fire if he wanted to. But this is an excellent situation here for Hellraisers. I mean, of course, LGB, all they have to do is sit back here, wait out the smokes. That's going to be the last one here on the B site. But they're, they're getting impatient. They want to go for the boost instead. And that's not going to work. Angel pace, patiently waiting. If he stays here and they end up going A, and they will have some advanced notice because Doja's up in the apps this time and he's in bedroom, which is actually, if you're going to be alone, this is not such a bad pick. And he does have a friend down there as well. Adrian is there with the AWP. They could push up behind them. This could actually work out for Hellraisers. They're rotating people over. They have, for once, a really good read here in Doja. They picked off Rubino. Nice play here from the CT side. Adrian with another kill with the AWP. Walks out, gets the third one. It's going to be Polly dropping and that's going to be a quad kill. Great round from the... Kazakhstanian player, and we're at 13 to 7. That's what I want to see a lot more of from Hellraisers. It even looked like there was some really good communication going on as they, they got the info quick that something was going on. They started with the rotation. I was about to suggest that they could have pushed up behind LGB if they felt really confident it was going to be an A push, but even just having a rotation right now is, uh, you know, I'm clapping with my hands. It's good stuff. Yeah, that's definitely uplifting. Uh, and it's going to be another <coughs> eco out of LGB. So Hellraisers, man, they actually have a bit of a chance to breathe here for a minute. Question is now, LGB, it's looking like it's going to be a B take here. But a fresh smoke going down. So they set it up with the HEs. Well, these HEs are going to go down, and Jacob just barely dodges it. Rain actually taking quite a bit of damage there. But the flash, do they not try and flash through the smoke and just go running? They could, they could. It's not an unreasonable idea. Just uh, wasting a little bit of time off the clock. And oh, Jacob, what an opening on Flamey. There's a P250 and it didn't look like one shot range. Maybe he tagged him up a little bit earlier. Ruben are going to take down Doja. It's a round that Hellraiser can't afford to lose, but they're going to lose Adrian as well. What's going on? Kucha finally coming through the shot and the bomb is going to be planted no matter what. And Hellraisers, they, they could try and fight this, but if they lose the rifles, they're pretty going to be echoing. Yeah, I don't even know what to think at this point about this. Like, how does it get out of control? How does Hellraiser, how do Hellraisers lose this? Now Kutcher finally takes out one, but it's far too late. And he's far too low on HP. They have to back off. Kutcher is definitely having a bit of a rough match this time around. Only six frags so far in the game. But... Hmm. 
it gets into this position again because they're essentially they're alone in most of their positions. Yeah, um, you cannot. They need to be overlapping. Basically, they can't not. Especially versus like eco rounds like this, where you're, you're most likely going to be facing multiple terrorists. They're just going to try I and mean, run you down with pistols. <clears throat> the way that Flamey went down, I can kind of forgive that because it's not that uncommon for someone like Flamey to be holding alone in his position. Yeah. But over at Archway, why isn't there a guy quad? Why isn't there one guy nin ninja corner that could sort of peek out and go and get the kill really quickly? Like, there's so much that they could do for these kind of setups that they just seem to uh, avoid entirely. 14 to 7 here. LGB with a really sizable lead and. Hellraiser's having big issues connecting the dots right now. And if they start losing now, I mean, their economy is so bad. Kucha, rather aggressive push-up in apartments here. Not necessarily a bad idea. Although, again, he does kind of not have anyone with him here to, to get the uh, the refrag if anything goes wrong. Angel gets one, not the second kill. And now coming around the corner is going to be Doja. He smoked it off preemptively. And Kucha's fallen back down in pit. And it's not such a bad idea here for LGB to back off and be patient as well. They got the damage in, they picked up somebody, they, this is now advantage LGB. They forced Hellraisers to use a lot of their nades as well right now. Whereas they still have a lot of their gear. So this isn't too bad a scenario here. LGB can afford to give up a few seconds, wait and see if anybody on Hellraisers is going to peek out. But Kucher's waiting on the angle and he misses the flick somehow. Yeah, just a little bit uh, a pixel. I think he basically shot right between the wall and the players, so... That's a real shame. And now they're going back into... Well, I think they're going to end up at B, but these smokes that are raining in here from Rubino are going to be indications of an A push, a very, very common smoke as well. Usually there's two, which might actually be a tell that uh, something else is going on. Kooch are not going to miss this shot, but no one rotating out of B either. Adrian in a great position here. They could definitely win this round. Just one max seven shot, and it should be all over. There it is. Flamey actually the one picking that one up, and in the background, he's going to get the kill on Rain as well. Ten seconds for Rubino to get this kill on Flamey and put the bomb down first. Mission accomplished. Now, he needs more. And Kutcher stops running just at the right time there, but they are both coming in together. Doja looking back. Is there the shot? He's going to go for it, Rubino, and he's going to drop Doja down to half HP, but it is not going to be good enough. Not this time, at least. Doja <clears throat> keeps his cool, and Kutcher isn't even necessary in this retake. So that is very nicely done there. Bit of an off timing there, bit of a mistake made by Zevas as well, running before that smoke popped. There could have been a lot more pressure over on that A site, but it wasn't the case this time for LGB. No, not this time, but I'm glad to see the Hellraisers didn't freak out and just look over rotate because they're under so much pressure that just, that's really when you're going to start making like basic mistakes and, and run before you see the bomb or anything like that. So, you know, credit to them for not, uh, not giving up the B bomb site too easily. Smoke out for Kucha. Gonna land at the bottom of Banana, and um, at the top of Banana, we've got the rest of at least two players from Hellraiser waiting. They are doing significant damage right here. Flaming with a good double, but it's gonna be returned, and Angel, he gets one, and it's not gonna be any kind of comeback from LGB this time around. They were a little bit too busy throwing grenades and yeah. not busy enough shooting. I'm surprised at the number of nades there. But 2v4 right now. They know that somebody's mid, but there isn't a whole lot for LGB to go off of, really. 2v4 on Inferno. It's a nightmare. And I'd almost like to see them just go for, like, smoke on CT, smoke coils, and run onto that B site. See if they can't just get in there. Slow play, though. Yeah. I mean, they still have 50 seconds, but this is going to get to the point where they really just need to kind of get in here. And B site could be the right place to go because there are so many angles to check on A site. You do feel very exposed running in here. Yeah, I agree. I mean, they waited a while. They waited around for just a second, seeing if Hellraisers were going to come and peek them somehow, and obviously that's not happening. So now they got to rely on some stunning entry frags here. That's the only way to get back into this round. And they could start off with Pit here. They're waiting. They're in a good position, but now they've been spotted out, and backup is going to come in here with just 20 seconds. They really can't go anywhere else at this point. So they have been found out, but they're going to get both the entry frags. Oh, no. Hellraisers... Deciding to fight essentially before the bomb plant is even attempted and um, That caught them in a weird position now that pr practically gifted LGB this round now Both members however in pit and Polly decides to run out into the open Perhaps trying to bait it. Do they know that Rubino is here? I think they're gonna go and check it The reaction does he get the? he doesn't jump the gun such patience out of Rubino right now They really are trying to thoroughly check pit Rubino with the spray on what is a double spray? What a gambit, what a play, and he even saves the AWP for Polly afterwards. 
That, I think, was like next level mind games. Polly's like, nobody is here, guys. You kill me. Don't mind Rubino. Yeah, very, I mean, very impressive. Very, a lot of patience, like you said, to, to not, you know, jump the gun and be, and be too aggressive when he probably would have died. Even if he got the first kill, there's a good chance he could have been returned upon. And now it's a map point currently here for LGB Hellraisers. They've got pistols, five sevens and a lot of them, but um, it's not really what you're looking for at this point in the time. Good kill from Kucha though, the only from us in play. Gonna take up a kill and Angel with one more here. So looking good right now, but it's hard to feel like Hellraisers are basically fighting at this point to just kind of buy a couple of more rounds, but for them to make the full comeback, they're just not playing, you know, cohesively enough. There's too much, too much randomness in the mix. Too much wishy-washiness going on here. <clears throat> that was a nice, uh, I mean, that was a nice push down banana there for Hellraisers. It was, but that last round, when they were in that 2v4, if you're not feeling 100% confident you can pick up the kills and the guys coming in, you can even allow yourself to just say, well, I'll stay in pit and not peek. Mm -hmm. You stay over at, you know, library and wait, let him put the bomb down. And then rotations come in, we'll go for the retake. No problem. That would, that would have been like 100% success for, uh, for Hellraisers because there's no way you can all lay bomb site while you're inside the bomb site against four people. That's just not happening. But I don't know. They, the communication is not the best right now. Angel with some good damage on Rubino here. Gonna give them a good shot at winning this round at the very least. Rain wanting to go around the corner, but get that wrap around back oh, for CT, what? and they have just been utterly outplayed. Wow. Does Adrian make it back here in time? Adrian's still got two nades, but I think they're gonna have a smoke. Yeah, they're gonna have a smoke to block off Banana. Adrian can go for the spray, though. He spots them. He's got an edge to work with, but Polly saves the day, gets the kill on him with the AWP. Man, Rubino's so low. Polly, Rain, just so little HP right now on LGB's side. Man, that's some really, really quick thinking going on on the LGB team. I'll try and explain exactly what happened here. Angel and Kucha left, and they will get a kill on Polly. Maybe it's not over yet. Rain is waiting over by Flowers, and they're going to check the back of sight. Rubino, oh, this is going to be the save. Rain peaking exactly at the right time, and LGB are going to win the map 16-8. to eight. But essentially what happened that round is they could make the assumption that there was someone either B or Apartments, because or oh, sorry, in, uh, in apartments or in pit, because there's pretty much been that the whole game for, for LG, for, for Hellraisers. Mm -hmm. And they almost got killed by Angel. So they realized there was two people there. They wait around for just a second in archway and think, wait a minute, if there's two people here, there's only one guy left. They couldn't know Adrian has pushed all the way down to, to you know, T-Ramp. That was just like really, really lucky on their part. Sure. But um, at that point, you know, they just, they just, you know, do the quick calculation and say, let's play 3v1 against Adrian. The fact that they managed to smoke him out and he can't get the kill is just like a huge bonus for them. Well, that Polly, man. Po like, if he's yeah. allowed to spray for even half a second longer there, I bet you he just gets two. Yeah, probably. And then LGB, they're left out in the cold but in that scenario. That, exactly that situation is what we talk about uh, when we talk about, like, good mid-round calling. Because that's where you have to have an in-game leader or somebody else stepping it up and saying, you know, you know, I, I figured it out, guys. This is what we need to do. Let's push. So, um, yeah, that's good stuff. That's it, guys. So, um, first map, we aren't going to be taking a break. We're going to go straight into the second map oh, here. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No break. Well, I mean, it is, what, 2110. I believe our next best of three is supposed to start at 2230. Yeah. So, you know, we've got two best of threes tonight as well, guys, on top of the two best of ones. So, it is going to be a good night of CS, basically, through and through. Because, I mean, the next best of three is still Fnatic versus Envy. That's, that's going to be pretty sick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, two, the, the two best teams in the world, essentially, playing mm -hmm. each other in a best of three. Why not? Even though it's going to be a little bit late, you guys should uh, stick around for it because it's going to be really good. Second map, well, that is going to be on Mirage. And um, I say, actually, I think Hellraisers have more success recently on Mirage than they do on... Uh, <laughs> And they do on their Getting distracted because if I lean forward, it really makes me look like I got some like a beer belly going on right now. I do feel like I should belong in Miami, you know, like just sitting on the side of the pool. You know, I need more gold chains though. I gotta call Trance. Just get some gold chains, a medallion, you know. Trance? I just thought you was gonna say Scoots. Oh, Scoots as well. Dude, Scoots with that esports money, man. Yeah, the esports like, dollars. Doesn't he have a pool as well? He does. Yeah. Except that he lives in Arizona. Like, who wants to live in Arizona? Nobody it's wants really to live in Arizona. It's really humid down there, isn't it? No, it's really hot. And like it's dry hot. No, oh, no, no. It's really? desert. It's pure desert. Oh, like right. the city of Phoenix is actually sinking in. Like the, the the cement gets so hot in the summer that they have that like they're misting everything. You have misters on the sidewalks, basically. Otherwise, you just like heat stroke. You know, your just brain boils. Like, why would anybody live there, Scoots? No wonder he comes to Europe all the time. Exactly, man. So, 
Okay, I guess this is like my young Scoots impression, basically. <clears throat> That's what I'm trying to say here. Young Scoots. I'm just sitting there looking, you know, the world is my oyster. CS, mm. got frag. All right. Well, um... And then he lost all of his hair. Yeah. We are going to go for a two-minute break, guys. So um, get you get a time to sort of <laughs> mentally, you know, savor that moment. And we'll be back in just two minutes, so stay tuned. This is the esportslover.com Bjorn Bok Challenge. We'll be right back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's the second map here. It's the losers' match between Hellraisers and LGB. We're going to yeah. go on to Mirage. Um, 
Hellraiser is still not looking quite fresh on Inferno. No. That's like the summary. Pretty much, even after having a map to warm up against. Although yeah. I don't really feel like they got much of an <coughs> opportunity to warm up from against Envy early on in the first map of the day. No. It was still, you would kind of hope to see a little bit more out of Hellraisers. And we just didn't really see it this time. Like, Inferno is clearly a map that they need to put some work into right now. Because LGB, they, like, we should expect them to struggle versus Envy, but to be able to at least put up a fight versus LGB, or if not take the map. Yeah. And it never really seemed like at any point, apart from Adrian getting, like, basically weird individual performances on their part, yeah. like Adrian getting a quad kill with an op or something. Those that, are going crazy in a pistol round. Like, it is down to, to th those kind of things, which yeah. is nice. Looks really good in highlight reels, but it's hard to win whole matches, or even looking even further, whole tournaments. Yeah, uh, best that. of threes, man. Yeah. It is just not really a viable solution. Uh, I, I don't know. Bring bring back Blade. I think we said this earlier, but he's playing. You know, so well, I don't know. I mean, if you see such a huge difference in a team from one event to another, right? To 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 have yeah. like, you can really tell. I think it was almost a crutch for Hellraisers because I feel like now that they don't have Blade, they got so used to having Blade and they were so happy about having Blade that now that they don't have Blade, it's as if you know they. It's been yeah. like you know, just they they've lost what they want to do. They don't have a they don't really seem like they know what they're doing on the map anymore. They they're just kind of back to their old selves again. I mean, it is just really really confusing. I need I need to talk more to Hell. I I'm, I'm gonna try and fight Angel somewhere and see what's up because it, it really feels like there's something weird going on. Um, Angel, spread your wings. Yeah, and Angel like Angel's a smart guy and he's a smart player and a good in-game leader. So it's it isn't just that. Like Angel could definitely come up with stuff if he. If he needed to, but it just feels like they're not really interested. Or something else is going on that we don't know about. I mean, we'll we'll have to do more research, more digging, or someone else should. Rain and Polly left here. It's obviously a knife round versus Angel and Adren. And you want to start on the CT side of this map, especially if you're Hellraisers. Get off to that good, strong start and see if you can't push this onto a third map. And they're going to do at least uh, the first part of that, winning the knife round. So uh, mm -hmm. if you are just joining us, a big welcome here. This is the firstpersonlover.com Bjorn Borg Challenge. Remember... Um, Sam and I played the game earlier and tried to run through it, and there is a leaderboard going on if you play the game. It's a browser game, and you can just go and play it at any yep. time. Firstpersonlover.com. Um, yeah, and you can go in and tweet at, uh, at Bjorn Borg, uh, really easy to find, and um, you know, show them your scores, and maybe you'll win some stuff. So uh, mm -hmm. don't forget to do that. Hey, hey, win something like this. Mm. You've nice, got a very you've, fine pair of underwear. You've got the white trunks, but I've got the black ones, so... Well, if this is only normal, Anders, because, you know... You're my Yang. <laughs> That's a really creepy image. <laughs> I beg of you, no one Photoshop that. It is going to be the uh, first round coming up oh. here in the Hellraisers. They've got some grenades here. In fact, a lot of grenades, considering um, LGB do too, but only one smoke. And they're actually already up connected. They're so fast on this Norwegian team. Look at this. Kucha running back, and he's blocking Angel, but they get the kills regardless. Doja and Angel, good opening frags. Looked like that was about to go horribly wrong. Bomb will go down, yes, but LGB are going to have such a hard time controlling this bomb site. And Polly does make it a little bit easier with that kill, but it should still be a good retake here. Did he somehow not spot the man in connector? Angel is going to get the kill point blank on Polly there. So no heroics for <clears throat> Polly. The Molotov? No, a smoke going down into the apartments. This is now just down to Jacob, and they know where he is. Angel coming alive in this round, just doing everything he needed to do. Stay alive, get the kills. They tried to push him down, but it just wasn't meant to be. Angel, man, and again, again. It didn't look like a concerted effort. It just looked like Angel laying down the law right there. Yeah, but at least they managed to not rush in one at a time or anything like that. I mean, they they somewhat controlled the team then. Mm. It just looked a little bit fumbled at the beginning because LGB got so far up into connector before anyone even noticed. Um, but I think that was just the Norwegian team playing really fast. Now look at this. They've got no souls at all. They've bought five Tech Nines. It's almost like they want Hellraisers to hate them. Is it They've as bad as when people were buying five CZs, though? But this is even almost worse, I'd say. It's got 32 bullets. I mean, they're never going to run out. They can, None of them can reload and they can win the round here. But smokes go off. This is actually a sort of a Titan strat coming out, smoking off the length of the bomb site like this. And here's the Tech 9 in play. Kucha going to overcome the first one. But he goes down to Polly's, and Polly will find a second kill. That's a headshot on Angel. Picks up a weapon, and he could have just continued with the yeah. Tech 9. He had plenty of bullets left. That's like the one on one rule. Don't stop shooting with the Tech 9 and don't reload. Just keep going. Now Rubino and Sevis are actually in very bad positions to cover this bomb. This is uh, definitely not easy. Hellraisers may have managed to control the round once again. Here, Sevis is going to come out, put on a little bit of damage, but they will be able to make it work. 
it looks I mean it looks like a good idea when you're when you put the bomb down that you should fall back to ramp and apartments like that, but it is so hard to hold. Yeah. Especially like the all they need is one smoke. We saw it in the first round, any kind of grenades like that, and you're not gonna be able to help each other. But it's so by the book as well. Like you need to be catching Hellraisers off guard. You can't be just doing the same thing over <coughs> and over again. And if the first places that Hellraisers are going to look yeah. is apartments and pit. If you're hiding <coughs> in get right, imagine the damage you do at that point because they're so focused on apartments or pit that they go, they, maybe they just go running right past you. Something along those lines. Look at the LGB with the bomb plant and because they got so close, they feel like we could force to buy a little bit more. Not a full buyer, but just a little bit more in this round. And they are going to have smokes. I think this one is probably for the window, and then they're going to put a couple of smokes over. Oh, it's actually for shorts. A very smart play here. And uh, Flamey by the truck, looking to be unflashed at any moment. And in the meantime, he's going to go down, but Kucha with a kill, and Angel also picking up one. The bomb is dropped here, looking really good for Hellraisers. Yeah, this is looking like everything is going to go their way now. Although Angel has been overwhelmed, Kucha is here. He gets instant headshot, though. That's not going to help things. And then Zevez is actually taking out Doja. That was Doja pushing from Kitchen as well. This is all down to Adrian at this point. This nade is going to do nothing. And they have a crossfire scenario. Now it comes down to Zevis staying alive. Zevis cannot show himself. They've both got guns to work with now, however. So this is going to be insanely difficult now for Adrian to get onto the site and get this defuse. Yeah, he's just looking for them, but they're using the sound so well against him, and he's going to take down Sevis, but Polly's still alive. Eight health left here, and there's almost no chance he can get this bomb down. Polly. Even if he kills him now, it might be too late. And there it is, 2-1 for LGB. Now, um, Gunner, if we can pull up the uh, the map real quick, I'm wondering if we can show the, the position over by A-Ramp, where they were last time, where they had one guy holding. Uh, yeah, right there, and then why grab an apartments. One way to actually hold this bomb site once you have the bomb down is rotate the guy on A-Ramp all the way through T-Spawn, all the way into Connector. Simply run around, yeah, like that, all the way around, and then actually start shooting from the Connector once the bomb is planted. But you have to plant the bomb to begin with towards the connector. You have to see that far ahead to realize, okay, if we end up having one guy apps, one guy connector, or sorry, one guy slope, then we need to position ourselves for that as a terrorist team and get ready for the for the eventual retake. But I feel like that's a superior option to just hanging around. And that's such a, that's a, yeah, I mean, that's such a gamble option as well, though. I mean, it literally comes down to situation, basically knowing that they, are, they were either late on the rotation or they're not going to push forward aggressively. Yeah. And you want to do that with superior firepower as well, I think. Still, I mean, that's, that is still an option. I mean, LGB right now, I think we're going to see them start changing it up. But as far as they're concerned, their smoke round onto B site, just a, like even just a, a half eco round actually worked really well. And now has Hellraisers with their backs to the wall because Hellraisers have now dropped everything they've got. This is what's crazy about Hellraisers as well. They just, they, they will go for these kinds of force buys. And this is practically putting their entire first half on the line right here because if they lose this, they're broke. Yeah, they're going to be in a very bad spot. And the AWP is at least at the right bomb site, but they have smokes to get rid of Kucha here. Rubino peeking on out. He's up on the toll booth. He's going to go down straight. Headshot and then get right waiting. Adrian will be dropped. Jacob with a really good triple opening into the bomb site. And like you said, now what are they going to do? Now they have to save. Like, don't even flame me. Don't even <coughs> peek your nose into CT. Do not attempt to get information. Do not pass go. Do not collect 200 bucks. Just get out. Like Angel is already waiting over in B Apartments right now. But this, yeah, I mean, this is just a big gamble on Hellraiser's part. And if they get caught at this point, I mean, LGB at this point should just be just canvassing this map. Find them, kill them. Do not let them hold on to those guns. Yeah, but they are taking it somewhat slowly. Not feeling entirely confident, but you're right. They could have gone out hunting. Jacob credits him for that round. A little bit of wall banging being put through them, but <clears throat> into the fifth round. It's like, look at their money. They could yeah. afford to buy again. Why weren't they aggressively hunting? They could have been. They could have been. Now it's one M4, one from us, and then pistols on the rest. Would like to see LGB actually go for a slightly faster round this time to see if they can uh, get into a bomb site rather quickly and not sort of slow play it. And yeah, that they're actually going to do that. So I'm really happy with this one. Um, not giving any time for Hellraiser to set up. Those should also buy a scout, but uh, none of that's going to really matter at this point. Angel picks off one, but this should be a should be an easy round from here on out for uh, LGB. And they will pick up pretty much the remaining kills. Jacob coming through with another triple and Adrian. Well, one v three. I like this. This is going to be the lion wait moment, but Polly walks in. Polly gets the final shot. 
Little moment's hesitation there for Polly, but still, Polly doing a very <coughs> solid job once again here on Mirage. 6 0 2. Really strong start compared to the start that he got CT side Inferno, where it just he just wasn't yeah. seeing that much action. And every time he did see action, it's like, hey, by the way, we want you to rotate to A site. Oh, yeah, they've already got the bomb up and three guys alive. Yeah. Odds of you getting anything done, pretty slim. Somewhat minimal. Um,. You can't always, like, when you're in the position that LGB were just in and you realize they only have two rifles saved and the rest are probably not going to buy. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think you can always just say that you should you should try and rush somewhere, but sometimes it's a really good idea. Change uh, the pace. Yeah, change, change the, the pace. pace. It's also just like a thing where if you go into the middle and try and play stand around, you, you end up running into the M4 and maybe that guy gets a headshot on someone and all of a sudden the round is, like, a little bit unstable. It feels better just, you know, putting five people in one bomb site and saying... Right, if you're here, even if you have both rifles here, we can probably win. The only way you can really beat us if you, is if you have all the pistols too and you're really sort of stacked up and the chances of that are actually somewhat minimal. Um, so, yeah, I, I would say that that was a smart play from, from LGB. Um, now they do, bo they do buy up here and Hellraiser's luckily come quickly back into the game here. So thanks to them for not uh, wasting any time. Rubin are going to open up and that was the Mag 7 on Adrian going down, I believe. Yeah, Adrian getting caught out. Kutcher is going about to peek into short. They both look the wrong way, but Rain at least does manage to train that one, trade that rather one for one. So good recovery there on his part. They have the man advantage here still LGB, but hmm, that was looking a little awkward there for a second, seeing as how they were both looking to the left there for LGB. However, LGB, I mean, they still are pacing themselves here. Angel is the only one alive on this B site, and I do like this decision by LGB. I mean, they in this kind of scenario, likelihood is, I mean, it's very likely that you're only going to run into one guy on the B site, so why not just take a crack at it? Rubino goes down. Angel's definitely going to be calling for help now. He hears them coming, and he can see at least two and probably guesses the third one is in hot pursuit. Angel with a good pick off here. Great double kill. He's going to go down, but he just bought his team a really good shot at winning this 1v2 against Severs, who's been playing well in the, in his second match here now. He just has to clutch it. Goes up with a good grenade, but Flamey just getting the headshot, and that's going to be a good round for Hellraisers. Well, much needed one as well. There's something re that, I mean, that round we just saw, they almost lost it, and it's partially because they don't have any mid control. If you bring up the scoreboard, oh, sorry, the map real quick. Um, and Gunner, if you draw three lines from short, from window, and from connector into middle, no, I was thinking from the CT side, sorry. Um, there are sort of three angles you can look into mid from. Um, and essentially, if you're on the uh, if you're on the CT side, you want to abuse the fact that the T's coming into middle have to cover all these angles, right? Mm -hmm. They have to look all angles, and usually they'll use smokes to block off one or more of them. But LGB just sort of stroll in there and, and get full control. And Hellraisers don't have a setup where where you know one guy can peek and say, "Oh, he's looking my way now, go and shoot him," because you know they should be able to do that stuff, but they're just not. I like this aggressive push though, and that's teamwork as well. They got two people pushing up with one guy covering behind. I'm I'm a huge fan of it. Well played. The yeah, question is, are LGB going to pounce off of this? I mean, I feel like this was even a bit too slow because they did have the setup to counter this. Smokes do go down to block off connector, however, so this is now LGB's big opportunity. They have control of the A site. Just do, do they realize it yet? They're getting bogged down. And they didn't put any connector smokes down. Okay, then. This is why they're hesitating, but they line up. Doja going to take down Rain, but they still managed to get that bomb plant. Yeah, bomb is down. Jacob in the middle. Kitty catch Angel and come back and help out. He goes for Angel, but not going to win the fight. And that kills the round instantly. So I think you're right, actually. They they, they took a little bit too long and they didn't put out the right, the right grenades. And Hellraisers used real teamwork in the middle. And there's like a combination of things that went right for them. It's going to give them a 4-3 one map round advantage here at least. There's a lot of money on LGB still, though. Yeah, they still have plenty to buy up <coughs> at this point. Zeva still has 7k in the bank. So he should be able to drop whatever he wants here. You know, it's pretty much a free AK for anybody. So gear is not the problem here for LGB. Realistically speaking, they only really need five rounds as well to consider this a successful first half. So they're halfway through the round, they're through the first half at this point. LGB, they have three. They only really need two. If they can keep from having to eco, it'll be all right. But Kucher nice. with a great shot on Polly to open things up here from top mid. And he's even going to go for more. Picks up a second one, takes out Jacob from underpass. This is very clean work here by Kucher. And this is the kind of play that's going to build confidence on your team. <laughs> right up until Rain just casually takes two and return. Kucha's going to be really careful. They are close to him with those AKs. But he's playing at the edge, using the gap there, and that's really smart. And backup is coming in as well. You can see the rotation from Hellraisers. And actually, Angel's playing really smart right now. 
He's just waiting and making sure they don't push CT spawn and pick him off as he's rotating in until the rest of his team is there. So I like that play. Kucha now, triple kill for him. Hellraisers, they're really starting to come alive and you can see that they're under pressure. Communicating a lot better. Angel's gonna go down. Rubino with two kills. Oh no, Kucha, last man standing. And he's in an awful position right now. Gonna try and run out here. Gets the one kill in. Has to go for the ace now against Rubino. And there is time for it. it goes down. Triple for Rubino. And the score is tied once again. 4-4. Four, four. That, that looked like it should have been a great start, but it just didn't happen. The power of rain, man. Yeah. Yeah, rain with a double and then Rubino to finish it with a triple. That's also painful. Yeah, it's these, these, these Norwegians <coughs> are waking up over here. Jacob as well, just having great rounds before that. But yeah, Rain pretty much saving the day. And I did really like, I really did like what uh, what we were seeing from Hellraiser at the beginning there as well. This time around, however, Polly will miss the shot. Kucher as well, so no early entry going Hellraiser's way. Instead, it's going to be a straight B rush out of LGB. This is their answer, and Flamey is already lighting him up. Yeah, oh, good headshot from Flamey. Goes for a triple, and he has the bullets for it. The M4A4 howl there. Can't get the quad kill, but he's still done so much. And this is where Hellraisers can really start to relax. Obviously, it'd be best if they don't let the bomb go down. But if they really want to, they can wait till everyone is in position and just crush LGB. Yeah, all they need to do is hold. They need to just wait for that bomb, sound, that bomb plant sound. Hell, at this point, if for Hellraisers, exactly, they already have Doja flanking through. Yeah. Or is it? No, Doja got picked off from short. But who is up in the apartments and why are they feeding themselves to Polly? It's up in the apartment, so it has to be him and this Angel. Okay, Angel goes for the backstab there. But that was all about Hellraiser just trying to buy time. I'm just amazed that they started peeking before Angel got into position. Really good initial flashbang from Flamey. That was pretty much perfectly timed. They were so flashed, they couldn't stop and shoot at him or anything else like that. And half of them couldn't even really know how to move forward. So this, this opening saves it for Flamey. Imagine if he only gets the two kills and that ends up a 2v2. That is, that's not good. They're going to go for another rush here, and they do have two flashbangs, so actually not so much of a rush as they slow down. And they do it just before they're able to be hurt by Angel. So now the question is, are they going to get the timing down right? Because Angel's still down there. And if they have this crossfire set up between Angel and Flamey, that's going to be painful. But now he's actually used all his bullets, and that's going to make them go. Well, here's the HE, and Flamey's in a great position right now to catch them. The counter flash as well to buy more time. Angel alive on short, but not for long here. He has to be careful. 10 HP left on him. Playing the angle, but it's not going to be good enough. Zevez hunts him down. But that bomb is stuck on short, and Zevez... Oh, wow. One, one HP. Well, okay, then. I mean, what is going on? <laughs> That's a little bit lucky, I'd say, for LGB, because they just got a bomb plant that they otherwise wouldn't have. Uh, probably not going to win the round at this rate. Uh, Jake him though will take down one. Sevis is waiting and he's playing this so well. He's juking around. He doesn't get the kill on Adrian. Jake him will. Now the Tech 9 is out. He's hiding in the smoke and there's a AWP. That's the worst weapon. Jake him goes down and Kucha is just going to finish the round. But that's way closer than it should have been. Yeah, look at the money for uh, for Hellraisers here still. They're going to have to buy so much. Now, if LGB win, it's a catastrophe for Hellraisers. Unless Hellraisers can just obliterate LGB this round, get a little <coughs> bit of breathing room. If they were to lose a round now, LGB are going to run away with this half because Hellraisers are going to be in forced buy territory. Just, you know, pistol armor, anything yeah. you can cobble together. Like, a, from what, a Russian M4? Like, anything at that point. So this is it, the big round, and it looks like LGB. No rushes this time. It's just going to be the straight smoke round. Yeah, and Doja holding on side. He's got Adrian there with him. And in the middle there is actually a player waiting. That's Rubino trying to jump up inside the smoke to see if he can catch someone. That is some very crazy Norwegian-style Counter-Strike coming out here. Smoke's going to go away. Jacob opens up inside the bomb site, but they still got to do something about Doja. They've killed Angel, but that's not the right man. They line up for Doja perfectly. And it's a triple kill here from the Russian player, leaving Rubino alone, and that's a good round. Well played on Hellraisers. They only lose two members. Mm -hmm. That's what had to happen, pretty much. I mean, keeping three guys alive in that scenario is just fine. Rubino had a good flank. I mean, he still managed to pick up the one in, um, in window there, but Doja, I mean, that's the thing. LGB get a little bit of luck last time. This time around, Doja gets a little bit of luck. He sprays down two. If it's a one-for-one -one trade there, LGB can still do the damage because yeah. they still have to worry about Rubino coming in from behind. Uh, what yeah, and I think, think I mean, in that position, if you're if you're Rubino and the bomb does go down, all of a sudden, you know, you're the guy saving the round because they're they're going to look anywhere else except you know for window basically. 
Rain. The tech nine <laughs> to take down oh. Kucha. They can't get out of the, the blast radius there from the grenade. And Angel just putting through some flashbangs, trying to keep them back. So it's good that they put a stop to Rain right there. Yeah, that was necessary, right? <clears throat> I mean, Rain in particular, man, this is this is like the hero of Inferno for uh, LGB. You don't want to let this guy get any uh, get any momentum. If he does, he runs away with everything. Or he'll just rain on your parade. Yeah, but... Hmm. That uh, two Tech-9 shots forces Flamey inside and almost looked like Adrian was going to run as well. And they can't do that because it's going to be at the A-bomb site that all the action is going to happen. Still 40 seconds left and waiting inside. Doja is there, and I think Adrian is also still holding. This position from Doja is pretty good, but he's got to get the kills quick. If, if you, this turns into like an elaborate spray fight from him, he's going to get overrun by the pistols, and Adrian won't really be able to save him that much. And Rubino has made his way all the way in here. This is way too much of an open position for, uh, for him to occupy. And this is going to give a lot of opportunities, I think, for LGP. Good shot. That's a headshot as well. And Doja's there. Gets the quick kill. The return. Oh, he's out of the pistol. And that took too long for the second kill. And now Rubino's position here. Oh. Even just even just hearing them is so much. Look, yeah. he knows what both are. Exactly. And he's telling them. One CT, one connector. They know exactly where they're coming from now, LGB. He's going to be able to get the perfect flank off. The instant headshot on Angel. And now Flamey is going to get gunned down by Jacob. Just as good as it gets there, as clean as it gets for LGB. And they come right back into it. And now look at the state of Hellraiser's money. They just don't have much at all. And they can't afford to give any more rounds to LGB. This is so scary. If it goes 9-6, that's way too close. Yeah, I would definitely say it was. I'm so glad we caught that moment there with uh, with Rubino just mm -hmm. looking through the walls, essentially. And that's obviously to uh, sort of discern exactly where the sound source is coming from. So he has a really good clue if they're running you know, one way or the other. Um, that's how you do it, by the way. That's why you see pros looking at walls like that. It's simply because you know if people are running to left or right when you do it. A uh, really important skill to have and something you should definitely work on if you if you haven't already. Um, Rubino could get caught over here in T-spawn. They're sort of pushing up a couple of different angles, and maybe he's going to be found by Angel, who seems to be dangerously close. But over at Connector, Sevis will open up, and uh, yeah, they will catch Rubino, so that's a really good kill. Yeah, that's going to give them a gun as well. Angel has the M4 now, but Jacob has taken out Flamey. But now they know, at least they have to suspect. Angel Apartments, is he going to be here or is he going to be coming up from Pit? They spotted him out now, so this is pretty much the big worry here. Angel picking up another kill. Two on two scenario, but Angel still very limited gear. He's just got the Molotov. They should be able to play this out, LGB. Good grenade. They have a Molotov in return as well, and that's going to go down. So now what is he going to do? Without a kit, if he waits for this to go away, I mean, they're going to get into good positions and it'll be, yeah. It'll be impossible. He's running away, not feeling it. So, six, seven, scoreline. There it is, LGB. Now they're officially starting to feel really good. I think they're grinning at this point. Like, they should be very happy so far with this result. And there's still two rounds left in this half. They could even go farther. They could turn it into, like, a 7-7 seven, seven scenario with Hellraiser trying to battle back for, for their eighth round on CT side. And we've already seen what LGB are capable of on their uh, on their CT side, right? Well, at least Inferno, they looked very good. So now Mirage. Mirage also a uh, fairly solid CT map. If LGB start to get rolling with it, I think it's going to be a very, a very real struggle here for Hellraisers. As if it weren't already, right? Like, Yeah, this has definitely not been their day. Meeting Envy first and getting slapped out of the map very quickly and then... Second uh, match here, which is a best of three. They lost the first map. Second map here, not looking too hot either. I mean, definitely better, but um, but still a little bit questionable. Seven's going to open up on Dosha, and if they lose this round, it's not just bad. It's it's actually a, a disaster for them. A calamity. It's calamitous. But Kucher bringing it back, takes out Zevez, but then Polly takes out Kucher. You can't not have those one-for-ones. Although, look at the early rotation. The wall bang as well. What? That was very nice. <clears throat> yeah, and I think uh, who's up there in a uh, in that's Flamey. If you go to him, actually, you can shoot right through the wall where Flamey is. Actually, even if he's up in the window, like in that little uh, little thing, there, you can actually shoot right through an AWP, and it does a lot of damage. Um, you just got another right spot somewhere, but um, <laughs> it is a three v four right now. In life, right? Yeah, you know, just got to spend some time, a couple of hours on Mirage running around. Adrian with uh, the CT slope and Flamey also in connect. He's very low on health though. He's going to go down to Jacob and 
Now things are looking very bad indeed. Adrian doing his best, and that's some very nice spray control to take down Polly. That could make the difference right here. No, the wall bang. Doing good damage. Rain still turning this into a one for one. Adrian just casually returns the headshot, however, turns it into a one for one as again, though. And this is now a one on one. And Adrian, he's just looking for it and he will close it out. Jacob, nowhere to hide. And that is going to give them good hope here, actually, going into it, because Hellraisers now will be able to get to cobble together some kind of buy going into the 15th round, rather than just being forced to go for pistol armor. Yeah, it's not going to be, like, the greatest buy, but saving the opus world, what a round from Adrian. Really, really cool stuff. And he almost burned to death to the Molotov first time around, but LGB, I mean, sadly for Hellraisers, they actually have a pretty decent bu uh, bank going on. I think Sevis had, like, 8,000 going into this round, so there's going to be a lot of rifles here still on the Norwegian side. 9-6 is the best case scenario for Hellraisers, and they need that. They definitely need that. Well, once again, battle mid. And Kutcher will wow. win again, although Polly struck first. And Polly probably clipped him. I feel like we're having deja vu here. It's like Kutcher gets two, and then somebody kills him. That was a bit of a new twist, though. Rubino finding Adrian, the hero of the last round for Hellraisers. But then Doja steps in, nearly controls his spray well enough there to pick up two. And they're all rotating over. They really want this last round. They're just fighting this one big group here, Hellraisers. The Rain still wins that fight, even though he's halfway flash to begin with. So it's still a 2v2, and Sevis is now here as well. And he's not going to be there quick enough. Now it's a 1v1, and pretty even as well. Sevis is going to find the last headshot. Triple kill here for the Norwegian leader, and it's going to be, um, yeah, 8-7. That is a bit of a disaster. That is, that is, that it's very difficult to find words to describe just how much of that was. I mean, why did Angel walk out at the end on Electric there? Just casually walked out as well, slowly, instead of yeah. playing the site, play uh, for time. I don't know. And yeah, that is brutal. That is brutal. They could have also tried to wait and see if LGB were going to risk putting the bomb down in that 2v2, you know, something, something like that. Did they really? But um, now look at LGB. They're ready with the snipers here. It's a USPS. They've got one HE and a kit on Sevis. And actually, he's in the wrong spot for it right now, which is a little bit of a shame. But uh, no, actually, are they going to end up? Well, oh, this is clever. Angel has got a P250 in armor. Doja dropped it for him, I think. So they're trying to shift it around a little bit. Kevlar P250, that's not too bad to have in a pistol round. Look at what they know. They've already got rain coming up from behind. So this is LGB with 100% knowledge of what's going on. Ruben with the one kill. Adrian. Taking someone with him, and he's going to need a lot more than that. They're in CT spawn, just fighting it out. The bomb is planted as well. Rain coming up from behind now, and he's going to get the kill on Doja. Kucha goes down, and LGB win a huge round for themselves. And I actually applaud what Hellraisers were trying to do. I think the idea of pushing through, getting the bomb down, and then pushing CT spawn is a very, very cool one. It's generally, the I think, the right play, but this time they couldn't win the fight. No, they exactly, you know, just going in there. But the fact that there were so many people there so quickly for LGB, it was just this constant battle. And eventually, and I think the, the main flank coming in onto that A site from behind like that, the fact that they were able to put a CT member all the way through T-spawn, he came in, he yeah. just eviscerated the guys who were actually holding on that site. And then it just comes down to basically Adrian and Angel just trying to do the best that they could there. And Sevis also was up in B apartments really early on in that round to check that no one was there. Yeah. And then once uh, Rain got up to, to top mid, they sort of just knew. Yeah, they had The only way anyone could have snuck by was if they were where they are now, basically underpass. And uh, LGB just gambled. That's not going to be the case. And oh. then they pushed A. That nade. I'm surprised it didn't do more. That looked like it was dead on. Well, that's not going to be very pleasant for Hellraisers. And they lose Doja as well, so that certainly isn't going to help. Two guys in underpass, one in A apartments. Hellraiser's looking like they want to get onto this A site. The bomb is going to be making its way up connector, but Polly just spotted out somebody. They know, drops the bomb carrier, gets the double kill. Very swift work there by Polly. And there we go. Rubino shot, uh, dinked in the face down to one health. So that's once again just a little bit annoying there. Hellraiser's, I mean, they did get the bomb plant, so they're going to go for AKs here in the 18th round. And, um,. I don't know. Regardless, they're fighting from, from quite far behind at this point in time. They need to start off here in the second half with some consecutive rounds, force LGB to eco, really, really make a statement that they want to see that third map. Let's see. Zeva's going for a bit of an angel, and he actually gets the kill blind as well. 
Glad that Jacob was there to tag along, and somehow they come out ahead here, LGB. It just seems like a run and gun fight from the <clears> beginning. <throat> but the bomb is still dropped back in T spawn right now, and if somebody was to push for LGB, man, what a present would they find. It wouldn't be too bad, would it? Good kill here from Flamey, but Polly returns it. And that's a little bit, I mean, this kind of setup all the time for LGB. You saw that whole fight in the middle, that what they could continuously do that round was He's essentially solved. to um, was oh. essentially just to continue to uh, to pick off people. Every time they killed someone, there was a return kill from LGB all the way through until the end. One thing here for Adrian is that he could at least get the pawn plant down, but uh, still a tough position. He could win this round right now. This is big. I thought that Rubino spotted him getting into the apartments, but Rubino was just a second too late there. And now Adrian, before he even gets that bomb plant, he wants to try and catch somebody off guard. He wants to try and catch somebody out. But they're so far away at this point. I mean, look at uh, Rubino's position. All the way back in T-spawn. <gasps> oh, no. He missed Polly then. That looked like that was going to be an easy kill. That is... That's, the, that's a question of peeking one pixel wider. Like, one pixel and he's got it. They really still think it's going to be A-side as well. They have no way. Now they should know. Now they should know. Bob has been planted at B. You guys got juked. And Polly, man... Well, he should be happy he's even alive. Adrian came so close, yeah. But even even here, Adrian's going to have the time to, to yeah. look at this. This position right here, he's just going to be listening, and he can hear him stepping. Oh, the oh. flash, though. That timing from Rubino. Yeah. Paparazzi style, just uh, completely blind. Can't see a thing. But he wasn't there to take his picture. He was there to uh, end him. 10 to 8, 19th round coming up, and Hellraiser's best they got out of it was a bomb plant, and they're gonna buy a little bit here. Three smokes, four smokes, one Molotov. If I see Flaming going into AAPS, I'm guessing he's gonna try and fire out um, Shadows, and then everyone is gonna Molotov. I'm, I'm guessing there's gonna be a smoke to see if anyone is in Shadows. Or it's not a smoke, a Molotov, sorry. So we gotta keep an eye on that a little bit. Yep. Very, very cool Molotov to know, but okay, he's going to go through, what? and there it is, exactly right. Down into Shadows, and um, that's going to make sure that they don't have to check that out. They can just go anywhere else that they want. Smoke show up as well. Hellraise is putting a lot of money into this round, so at the very minimum, they need to bomb plant. But look at how slow they are, and look at how fast LGBI is with the rotation here. Everyone coming in, and they are getting decimated inside the bomb site. They get the kill on Polly, and that's all. But well, we got to see the Molotov, and that's good. I just love that Flamey lives up to his name, man. He's like, hey, bro, I heard you like flames, so I'm going to run through flames while I throw these flames down into shadow. Like, yeah. that was commitment on fl to the cause. But that's also just Flamey not willing to back off, knowing that they want to get this done fast, get this done quickly. And yeah. it all comes down to timing, Set it up the ti setting up the timings with the nades. Your teammates might be in position to be able to pick somebody up who's running out of shadow. But if you're a second too late, it might ruin the whole thing. So... Well played there by Flamey, just as far as Hellraisers are concerned, the rotation from LGB was just too quick. Eleven eight. Polly Oping middle, and nobody's covering underpass for him, so... I wouldn't be surprised if he's only going to stay, yeah, so he's only going to stay like a short amount of time, because it gets more and more risky the longer you stay, someone could be walking up underpass, and then there's no one there, so... Um, just a bit of an initial position set up. Now they're going to go back to try and execute an A push, and LGB have a pretty good setup for it. Now they're down in shadows again, and is Flamey gonna do it one more time? Actually, it's Kucho's up there, and he doesn't have a Molotov, so that means... Look at the push oh, through wow. B apartments. Like, there's four guys on A site right now because of what Zevis has found. He's gone all the way through B apartments. He doesn't see anybody mid. He's gonna be working his way back into T-spawn, and they just backed off for Hellraisers as well. They would have no idea that he's pushing up behind them like this. It's almost like uh, tragic to watch because there's like a car accident waiting to happen more or less. LGB just have such a huge advantage going into this particular push here. Rain does go down. That's a good opening kill from Adrian. But now Sev is going to come charging through the smoke and he picks up the first kill right here. Second one denies the bomb plant. And that finishes the round. Pretty much. The creature is the only man alive. But as I say that before I even finish the sentence, Polly picks him off. So that is all Sev is. He's the hero of that round. And I was worried about him being a little bit too late to have an impact with his flank, but he just comes in at the perfect time there as well. So just huge round from Zevez, who's had a bit of a rough night. I mean, it's yeah. actually Rain who is, uh, who's lagging behind as far as the frags, but on Inferno, you know, Zevez was practically invisible. So to see him actually have these big rounds here on Mirage is, uh, is heartening. Holly? 
Not much of a chance to shoot anyone through that smoke. Now smoke into the window is going to deny it altogether. Hellraisers get a little bit of mid control here as they push up underpass as well, and they're going to deny that. As we look at this. This is what I like to see from Hellraisers, a lot more of this style. They will lose Flamey, who was single-handedly pushing in through the smoke over by uh, apartments. And the bombs are all the way back in T-spawn, so they made progress in the middle of the map, but where are they going to go with it? No. That's a nice pick there on Rubino, getting exposed. Jacob coming in, however, that's really nicely done. Picks off Kucher, who was low. Doja not able to respond. Somehow Adrian finds the kill on Jacob, however. He's worked his way all the way up into CPL, and Doja catches out the rotation from Zevez. They're just getting picked off, but Rain does bring it back to a 1v2. Problem is, is that they know where Rain is at this point, but he heard the steps. Hot on his heels, runs right into Angel, who stopped, who paused to listen. That's exactly what Angel had to do there, and he lands the shot as well. Very well done there. Not at all bad, and that's going to be finally around for Hellraiser. Let's bring up the graph real quick, if we do have a graph in the game. So that's the first round they've won in the second half here, after five in a row for LGB, and that is a trend that cannot continue. Hellraisers, they got to start putting together multiple rounds at a time here. But I do like that smoke that's been put up by Angel, making sure they can actually get into middle without getting sniped out by Polly. And Polly jumping around, and he's going to miss the shot, almost like they looked like the grenade killed him, but not quite. Ruben over two good kills, he burns alive. And it ends up being an even trade, which will favor Hellraisers. The bomb is in the middle, though, and they got to make sure that doesn't get lost in there somehow. I'm wondering if Polly wasn't trying to block the smoke from coming into window there. We've seen Kenny do that in the past. Yeah. And Guardian. First guy, first time I saw that in any match was actually Markolov doing it. Yeah, Markolov Now Mark that we're Lock talking well, about yeah. CIS stuff, but... Um, yeah, I'm sh I mean, you're right. That is that's something you could do. Maybe he did. Go and trying to get fancy, you know, go for the style points. It's like, hey, hey. Chest out. Very manly approach. Oh, Jacob. Two flashbangs. M4 in hand, jumping like a crazy person over here. Which is the right move, essentially. Especially when you're not playing against Kenny or someone like that, who can actually snipe people who jump like this. But um, going to be a little bit harder with the AK. Now here's the decoy. Flamey working his way up onto this A site. He's just here to, to sow discord, essentially. Misinformation. Look at the lurk. If he catches them out, if he were to catch Zevez right now, this would be big. This would be a big kill to take out Zevez, but instead he's going to get greedy, and he gets caught. Oh, Flamey. That was definitely a, a, a really, really big misplay there, unfortunately. Jacob in the side here will take down Adrian and Angel now. Ten seconds left. 1v2, and he can't really win this round. Long he's going to go for the mass spray. Ends up going down, and that will be 13 to 9. Oh, Flamey, I think he, I mean, he probably thought that if he did that, he would get the straight headshot. And it, mm -hmm. it looked like he should have, but, you know, he took just a second too long. That was really, uh, such a shame, because that would have been a big open. Like, that would have been the perfect decoy. Getting a kill in A like that, and that far into the bomb site, they would definitely have been thinking, all right, it's an A push, let's go. Um, yeah, that's a real shame. Polly waiting up in apartments here. This time it's pistols and almost nothing else. And they got to be careful they don't wait around too long because you can get grenaded down. They all peak at the same time. So good coordination, proving once again the Hellraisers can actually work together. They just sometimes choose not to. <laughs> Love that Jacob gets a double spray while blind and while pulling down. Ah, Zevis. See, Zevis, you can't get that wall bang. As he's trying to demonstrate that to Flamey, saying, this is how it works, Flamey. This is how it's done. You can shoot right over that box. Well, 14 to 9. Two rounds away, not just from the map point, but also match point here. LGB, they are a map up. They already won on Inferno. And it's looking like they might be able to do it on Mirage as well. They buy whatever they can here, Hellraisers, and they have to. It's not super impressive, but it can be enough. This isn't actually too bad. I mean... <clears throat> They, they're they very limited on the smoke, so this is what's going to be a bit depressing about it. But we did have a forward push coming up from Rain once again. Adrian, he's going to get dropped on Polly trying to pull a Kutcher, basically. Not this time. This is actually going to be Rain here to save the day. Takes that spray battle and doesn't get the kill. Are you kidding me? Oh, it chases him. Two health left for Adrian. Jake, him going to go down to Flamey. And it is a 3v3 technically, although Adrian is... Essentially on life support, and again, they have the bomb all the way back to spawn. So they just take all these forward positions, event, like in, initially, Hellraisers. They look for the pickoffs, they look for the entry frags. And once they've managed to reduce LGB a little bit, they try and see if they can't uh, make up a plan from there on up. But this time, they're a man down. And if they lose this round, especially without getting the bomb plant down, they will be in a very bad spot.
this is all about patience at this point. Look at where they are set up. Rain right now on Electric. He's just waiting for there to be a flank of some sort. Spots him out, puts some fire in. He could get caught, however, and that was it. Kucher missing an opportunity there. They must have heard the AWP. They must have heard that somebody was up on in A Apartments or Pit. Well, do they realize where Adrian is? I'm not sure. They really think that everyone is in middle, but they find Adrian regardless, and now Kucher bomb is down as well, and he is going to go down. That's a triple kill from Rain. Who is doing very well? 15 to 9. Rain. Um, yeah, well, actually, he's the bottom of the score. Sorry, this is Jacob doing really well at 29 kills. That's yeah. really that's really sick, though. That's really impressive. I mean, like we were saying, man, Jacob, he's kind of like this untapped talent right now in Norway. Finally getting to his first international land this past weekend and putting up a good fight, really showing that he is capable. But this guy has got ridiculous aim. So just more experience on his side, and he's going to be a true force to be dealt with here. There's so much talent on LGB. Between Rubino, Jacob, and Rain, I, it can get really nasty. But Definitely. Look at the positioning here now from Hellraisers. This time, there isn't a whole group. Holly oh. lands the headshot on Angel, so no joy there. Instead, it's going to be the straight B push, but Zevis is already in position. Fresh smoke to go down. He's going to have to flash the Molotov. Everything, just trying to buy time. Yeah, they take a lot of damage from that fire. Adrian tries to escape it, jumping out the window, and Jacob, he's no firefighter. He's there to catch him with the M4 instead, and grenade to finish off Doja. Wall bang through. They're not quite sure where Kuchur is, but they're going to realize right now. So GG has been called, and it's 16-9. LGB take the victory 2-0 in the loser's bracket. I mean, his Hellraisers are out. Yeah, I think they went to B-side just to give Jacob the 30 bomb. Yeah, that's very like, kind of them, actually. Yeah, exactly, I like man. that. You know, good looking out. We know you're having a... You know, it's your start. It's your big break. Going to make you look good. You know, Doja was all like... <sighs> yeah. Well, I, uh, there, there is a lot of work to be done on the Hellraiser side. Because um, mm. I really do think they have like a lot of raw talent to make it happen. Yeah. They just need, they just need more. They need something on top of that to, to make it work. It's not there yet. It's not there yet. I think it literally comes down to experience. It, Iron, oh, Hellraisers or uh, Hellraisers. LGB? Hell, well, Hellraisers is just like this enigma. Yeah. Like no, L I just want to see LGB continue on this path. Like yeah. more experience, fighting more top teams, continue on, and, and that's going to be it. That yeah. means uh, LGB, they're in the consolidation match. Exactly. Tomorrow. So they'll be playing in the best of three tomorrow versus yeah. whoever loses from Fnatic or Envy. That's going to be the next best of three coming up later, guys. Damn. But yeah, I mean, Hellraisers, I feel like they, they literally have to knock the foundations out from under their building. Like yeah. just kick everything out and start fresh. <laughs> like it yeah. has to be a fresh start here for them because whatever they're trying to do right now, and it feels like they've been doing the same thing for ages. Very the only time, time we've for seen years, them, basically. The only time we've seen them do anything differently was when Blade was on their team and that was for one event and Blade just bailed after that. Yeah. So, you couldn't take it. I don't know, man. I really don't know what, yeah. what Hellraisers can no, do. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. Look, guys, the next game uh, that's coming up is in about 30 minutes. 30 and it's minutes. the two best teams in the world playing. It's Fnatic and yeah. Envy. So you have to stick around for it. It's going to be amazing. But uh, you can use the downtime, the 30 minutes, exactly, to go man. on to uh, firstpersonlover.com and play the browser game that's on there. Um, the yeah. yeah we'll and show the game for a little bit. Can we show the game we take for the break? a little bit? Can we do that? Can we? Are, we, are we up for it? I think so, man. <laughs> Wait, is that going to track on I don't know. Uh, we need the mouse pad. We need the mouse pad too, and the Dude. keyboard. Ah, oh, there yeah, is yeah, a mouse we, pad. We, we got right. a mouse this pad, is bro. Some, some very ghetto it's all stuff. Good. Even all right, though, you now know, let's mouse see pads if this is, is going to work out or not. I'm really curious about this. All right, so all let's right. take a look. So, the one I'm thing I'm kind of disappointed is, is there's no bunny hopping. I, like I spent the entire no time trying to bunny hop. There we are. Of haters that you know, you need hey, to you. you need to essentially save people from from Try all the calming him down so, with a love push. Don't go, do this guy, please. Yeah, oh, get out. It's not stopping. And then Use your we have the kiss gun, gun that I hope you guys have some appreciation for here, throwing actual kisses now at the haters. To fill him and this is a little bit inappropriate, but we're past you know a certain a certain time, so it's going to be fine. And now we'll, we'll make him happy Let's again. He's wearing sunless jacket. Machine. Look at this stuff. I mean, dude, I'm happy. I'm Let's all smiles, man. And you know Use what this is? This is a hate generator. I don't know if that's very obvious. It's actually sucking out hate from the sewer. I didn't realize that earlier because I was trying to beat some score, but um, can make them stop right there. Harvester, hate harvester shut down. So this is the game, job, ladies and gentlemen. you got to make it through. I mean, like we said, Stay about sharp. 20 minutes is what we managed to make it through on. If you guys can do something similar, then you'll be in a, in a good position for it here. So go on to uh, firstpersonlover.com and see if you can beat our score and tweet at Bjorn Borg on Twitter and um, you can win some cool stuff right there.
but um, come on, yeah. multi combo, man, multi combo. Yeah, come yeah, on, we'll, Anders. We'll go. There we go. You got the love spree. Yeah, and then we'll, we're back we'll in save the 70s. Everybody at the same time. Look at how happy they are. Dude, I swear, man, you put that jacket on, everything looks just just so rosy. Everything looks great. So, so this is the game browser game, guys. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at you. Yeah, you see, now now, now you know your way around. Now you're saving some time. I'm never getting this map backwards. I, I, th I, think, <laughs> I think we're going to have to go for uh, for another shot, man. I think we're going to have to go for a rerun or something, you know, try and refine our times now that we've been through it once. <clears throat> Make it through, and you actually do get more weapons here, which is very cool, including this one, the shotgun. Nah, that's a machine gun, bro. Come on. No, oh, that's the shotty. That is the shotty. Yeah, look at this. Boom. Boom. Get out. Dude, the shotty is the best gun. put some clothes on before someone reports the stream, you know, kind of any of that. Yeah, this is in New York. And there's oh, no such thing as headshots. You can up. zoom? Yeah, oh, you dude, can. I never even discovered. I didn't discover that you can zoom with this. Yeah, you can. But uh, actually hitting Apparently that doesn't help. <laughs> it doesn't help at all. This is the machine gun. No. Yeah, no, no Kenny S action just yet. So yeah, these are all the haters, and we're, we're essentially trying to save them. And you can get like multi combos doing that, and uh, shut down. Oh, and there's a there's a boss at the end that you have to defeat. But again, conserving your ammo is something you realize is really really important because otherwise you end up running out. What? That's what I was saying, man. That's what I was saying. You know, it's like it, it's meant to come off. Actually, I think that's the that's what what it's all about right here. It's now, actually meant to come off because I'm reloading the gun. Should we show people what happens when you actually die in this game? Because it's kind of funny as well. I think well, we well, let them discover. You know, they got to go and play themselves, right? All it's right, only we'll like 20 that. minutes, guys. We're literally going to take half an hour break. You'll finish the game during the break, right? Yeah, you and could. The, the last boss is worth Whoa. it. You'll get a laugh. So there it is. 30 minute break coming up. And yeah, there we go. All right. The haters, they've been saved. Look at that, man. Everybody dancing. Everybody just so happy. Yeah, much, much better than I can. This is actually somewhat disturbing. So there it is, See ladies that? and gentlemen. That's what I'm saying. It's I all about... I appreciate that. <laughs> it's all about being able to reload it, right, Anders? Come on. What did you do? I didn't do anything. Get off. Good job. Somebody's already done it, too. 30 minutes, guys, and we'll be back here. It's going to be Fnatic and Envy. Best of three. So stay tuned, and uh, we'll be right back. After they came and destroyed the land, there was one spark of hope left for all of mankind.
Transform. Transform your state of mind.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back, Summer, as well. What's I up? I had to get the jacket, man. It was on the other side of the office. Uh, it is important. I agree. I gotta look sharp, man. <sighs> yeah. Besides, it's actually a pretty comfortable, comfortable jacket. It's a bit. It's a size too small. Hmm. I don't know if people notice that, but you know, know. it's not. It's not the big guns. I haven't been working out. You know, Pasha, beware. But uh, yeah, catching up to Pasha is gonna take a little bit of while. I think you know that's that's gonna put in some some real real dedication. But maybe. Okay. Will, will I'm noticing like random things. Like there's a jug of water over there now. <coughs> Pontus yeah. literally just came in with it. Pontus you know, is keeping us uh, hydrated. Yeah, he's looking out for us, man. <coughs> really important. Now, look, we are going to be moving into the match. It's going to be Envy versus Fnatic. Best of three here, and this is the first person lover. So go to firstpersonlover.com by Bjorn Borg. So go and check that out, guys. We're going to start on overpass, and it's the new overpass, which is great news. So knife round to start it off with. I'm pretty excited. I haven't actually seen a competitive match on the new overpass yet. It's been, it's been out, and now, um, now we'll see if we can get something cool going on here. Well, now you know, dude. I'm gonna be really happy because I've been wanting to see a new match on overpass for so long, or at least two top tier teams playing overpass. This is perfect. This is perfect. I'm really happy to see because now we get to see just how this new uh, entrance into Long is going to look. Even before the new entrance into Long, though, I really enjoy watching Overpass. Like it's really grown on me since it's been added to the pool. <coughs> yeah. So, me too. Like, me too. Now we get to see really, you know, how does uh, how does having two entrances entrances onto A change things? And also, when you are trying to hold Long, nice play there by Crims. But when you are trying to hold Long, are you too exposed by trying to play behind the truck? Rather than being able to have access to a boost spot, say, you know, boosting behind that truck, that second truck that's in front of, uh, in yeah. front of Bank, because there's like this invisible wall up there, so you can't actually boost up to look over that truck to look down long. You have to like fully commit yourself yeah. to like full body peeking, basically, to, to hold that corridor in. So, 
I don't, I don't know. know. We need to see how the teams like how the teams are going to look I mean, at it and approach it. The really big question is: Are Fnatic going to be brave enough to pull out some sort of new boost against uh, Envy? You know, oh, just man. come just up with something new for like old times' sake. <coughs> I will. I will warn. I did show both. Uh, I think I showed both Envy and. Uh, and Fnatic, that, that really weird wall bang down at the sniper spot. So, so now the question is, you know, JW, how fast is he? I'm looking forward to it. I hope it's going to be true. Uh, they, they learned about it at Pantamira. So um, now, well, let's see. It is going to be the first uh, map up here. And uh, it's obviously best three. JW, very aggressive style here. And that's an easy kill on Happy. But it's up in the A-bomb side where all the action's happening. And they only have one guy defending here. So yeah, they sacrifice Happy. But they could get the bomb down at A here. And Crims falls. That's a really good sacrifice for Envy. Yeah, and that's a very quick pick off. Olaf Meister comes in, takes out shots. MBK, however, <coughs> will return. And this is just back and forth right now. Full Kevlar across the board, though. No nades, and this is the right play here. Kyoshima needs to get this bomb down. Now, Fnatic taking very uh, taking their time, not overextending because they don't know if there was a fake, but now they know. Bomb is planted, and they're going to be able to take their time. They currently don't have a kit picked up. I'm not sure if there's someone on the ground somewhere, but if not, they need to move pretty quickly here. They've got everyone there, and now they're just sort of they're boxing them in the corner. They can't get out here. Envy, they're in an awful spot, and they're going to get sandwiched in. NBK with a good return kill, but they're so low on health. How are they winning this? I have no idea. That's an ace from NBK being trapped in the corner like that. They should have definitely not won that round. That, that was a, that. Those positions were pretty awful, and they sort of, you know, they didn't intentionally. They sort of, got in, yeah, unintentionally got stuck in there. Mm -hmm. That was incredible. But then the way that they played it is just like awe-inspiring. Is the fact that they're just constantly dancing behind this box, and also whenever Fnatic tried and pushed them, it's like two guys peeking at the same time on uh, Envy's side. So you're constantly <coughs> facing two blocks. Like that is yeah, but oh, NBK like just playing out of his mind. I think that's what it boils down to. And probably also the fact that Fnatic had like no real grenades or anything. They could oh, they yeah. had to just like go and challenge them. But uh, Crim's coming up with a double kill for the C set. 75, Envy getting a taste of their own medicine, you could almost say. And um, it's going to be a 3v4. Right, well, MBK wants to come down in here and hunt this. But Crim's, he's poised. He's ready. Does not get the shot, or at least does not hit it. So... We are back into a three-on-three. Three. Still some gear picked up on Fnatic as well. There's that scout on JW, but right now it's not into effect. He's still kind of hopping around, <coughs> as you can see over here on the B site. But it doesn't look like that's where the bomb is going to go. The bomb is currently in long right now, and there it is. You know, it's once you're up into long, you have to kind of hang around this point now, because if you commit, there's only one way out, and that's onto the site. Yeah, I mean, you can see he's got MBK here checking close for him, just making sure that no one's going to instantly peek out there. Happy picking off JW down at the other side, which is going to force one rotating back. And actually, they spot the second guy as well here. And it's a good job from NBK to do that. So, bomb making its way back B, but the UMP will not uh, have any issue taking care of that, which is going to make, make it 2 0. Oh. So, a bit of a shame for Fnatic. You know, they start with that great double kill from Crims. Looked like they could have spawned something else from it, but LD, sorry, yeah, and Envy sort of slowing things down, and uh, they managed to make their way out. Yeah, that really isn't too bad. <clears throat> Uh, this is definitely going to be very nice. Now, that, I mean, with this change as well, it's like how many rounds do we expect the T-side to pick up? Like, that, this is the, the kind of questions uh, that we need answers to. So, Envy, I mean, they're off to a terrific start. They get that flying start with the two rounds. They should be picking up a third here unless they get caught off guard. Just Crims gets annihilated this time. No love from Shoxy. Shoxy is making a lot of money with this ump, by the way. Like, they are going to have some options once uh, we start really getting into the buy rounds, thanks to the money, the bonus money that he gets for each SMG kill. Bronax, 1v5. Not going to work out too well for him. He ends up going down. And we're into the fourth round. Let's see what they can put together here. JW not with the AWP. Big surprise, actually. Um, definitely a bit surprised there. Then again, he really... <coughs> let's see. I mean, none of them had the money. And I don't think he really got much love. Like, with the scout, didn't get any kills. Didn't really do anything in the pistol round either. So, I mean, he did get that one flank on the man in sewer, but apart from that, yeah. there wasn't really a whole lot going on, so not a lot of bonus money for him to play with. Yeah, but still, it's, it is a decision you can make earlier on and just say, well, I'm not going to buy any pistols and just make sure that I have the money for it. It's true. Uh, so they just obviously didn't do that. All of my stay might be in a good position to get a kill on Smiths, who is basically going to go down for free, but Olofmeister's waiting. He's calling it in. He's saying, wait a minute, there's something going on. Smith is going to fall. How can Olofmeister actually do something with this position? He's going to go down to NBK. Flusher hiding right at the edge of the container here, over towards the bank. But he can't get the pick off, and this should be a bomb plant here. Envy off to a very good start, and 
I think that opening frag just left Fnatic in a bit of a weird position. They're going to basically win on from here on out. Flusher, best he could do is get a bunch of exit frags, but he's only going to get the one. Uh, just a very strong start here for the French team. They're a very strong start for NBK. Look at that, 9-0 and 1 right now. Like, nine frags. That, in the space of, what, four rounds? That's really good work from NBK. So... Individual play can make the difference, and this time around, Envy are really benefiting from that. But still, Fnatic are doing some damage, at least. It's not like they're just rolling over, right? They are still making it somewhat costly for Envy to be picking up these rounds. But that's not going to change the fact that they still are on pistols in this one. So, let's see. Holding up close this time. Can Crims get lucky again? Oh, look at this. Shock's really not leaving much to chance. Um, really solid play, I'd say. Happy! Bit of uncontrolled spray there. I think he got caught a little bit by surprise, even though it looked like he was peeking for it. And MBK is going to come through. Does go down to Pronax. So a couple of rifles lost, maybe unnecessarily here. But, um, you know, Envy, they're on the less favored side. Even if they lose a couple of rifles like this, they're still going to feel pretty good about having a 5 0 lead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on T side, I mean, we've seen kind of the evolution of how many rounds you should be picking up, right? Yeah. And it is still floating kind of around like 11 4, 10 5. Although it's really hard to know now that the A bomb side has changed. Exactly, like that's it, the big learning thing. It's re ah. we're going to have to revisit that double. Yeah, they heard you, right? All right, we're going to have to see if anyone runs down. I think JW is the guy to watch here. If if we can see something, I don't know if they're going to do it. Maybe they feel like it's ridiculous. But um, I had lots of fun matchmaking coming up with this uh, with the one wall bang. We got to check JW. No, no. not going to try it. I'm disappointed. Very disappointed. Yeah, Happy also has one, and it's so cool because Happy is like the, the guy orping for Envy on this particular map. Has been for a while. Not Smith, not Shox. And Happy goes down. <laughs> Speak of the devil. He did manage to lake JW, so you could sort of tell. And ooh, NBK nearly gets him, but Flusher with a shot through the wooden panel there to take him down. Should leave Fnatic in a very good spot at this point. This should be a, a good position for them. Indeed. This is definitely looking very good. And all those shocks, he may have the angle here. He may have the drop on Olafmeister. But this, again, just how this works here, the geography, or the architecture, rather, <laughs> of this uh, of this map, of this bomb site is very difficult. Oh, what the? Are they somehow not I, seeing Shoxy? I think they really expected him to be running into bank very quickly there. Kyoshima's going to find Olafmeister. There's a third man here, however. Scoped up, I believe that's <coughs> JW. Yeah, JW waiting in bank, but he's been, he's been effectively smoked off. He can't do anything in this position. So from a 5v3 into a 3v3, as Fnatic have sort of let go of the bomb site. The bomb has been planted as well. JW, got to be really careful. He's so low on health. One bullet on him. He's going to effectively lose Fnatic the round here. And they're all coming in from the same angle. So um, Envy can just focus on that. They've got Smiths in the background with the AWP, and this is looking way too good. Cleaning up the round just like that. Triple kill from Shoxi. And to be fair, that round looked very much like Fnatic had no clue how to play that new bomb site because they looked completely confused about what was going on. Yeah, the, reading the timings. I think the timings are... You get used to a certain timing as far as, you know, when the terrorist is going to start pushing onto that map. What are they going to look at? And it seems like Olafmeister might have just been a little off there with his judgment, not quite getting a read on where they would be. <clears throat> but it's also just the additional angles. You're so used to holding... I mean, if you spend time on that site, you're just so used to holding these particular angles and approaching it in a certain way. As soon as there's even a minute change... I mean, this is a massive change, the fact that they've added a totally different entrance into the site. But even a minute, minute change can actually change things up a little bit, so... Fnatic clearly and adjusting here. Oh, trying to do it, all of Meister with the return, and that actually gives them the bomb, but he's alone in here, and there's no way anyone can come and back him up. He's not even sure, I mean, he can't even make it out. He's gonna have to just play this one close with the Mag 7, and at best he picks up a couple of more kills and could even win the round, but uh, if nothing else, he basically has to try and buy a lot of time here for his team. Well, solid choice. Solid choice going to the shoddy. This is very scary now for Envy coming down in here. They have to look at the right angle at the right time. And they managed to just play it perfectly. Two guys coming from two different angles. That just worked out perfectly there for Envy. And now they get control of the bomb back. They have a man advantage going into this A site. Looks like Smith has appropriated that AWP. So he'll be leading the charge here, trying to look for the opening. One kill quickly returned by Kiyoshima. Crims covering several angles, pretty much all alone. And they're going to be charging in here for Mars to take down the bomb. He's going to run out here. Smart play by Crims. Not staying and fighting where they can shoot at him from different angles. And Smith's now all alone. 1v2 with just 16 seconds. He can't even get back into the site because there's a guy waiting there. 
And Smith is out of time. He has to basically just run in here and try and see if he can find the remaining player, but he's going to go down. And yeah, that round wasn't really on Smith. I mean, they tried their best, but I think Crims definitely wanted back. That double kill was huge. Yeah, Crims made the difference big right here. Well, this first one already really clean. Not taking a single point of damage, but then also not overspraying. I mean, he still has nine bullets left. That's more than enough to get the job done here on Happy. Great control from Crims. <clears throat> JW with the AWP. There's Smiths on the other side. So not Happy. And, um, and that's the power of having more people that could do it. Is If you don't feel quite confident, put someone else up to the task and see if they're going to be doing better. Yeah, it feels like uh, at least when we think happy in the AWP, we think happy on CT side with the AWP, playing that main entrance into B yeah. site, right? You know, that's like where I think a lot of his frag reel moments have come up with that sniper rifle. But there's the push onto long, and that's going to open it up. Smiths is here. Smiths could potentially pick up another one here as well, but crouching behind the boulder, Bronax hangs around just a little bit too long, and Smiths misses the opportunity to punish. He needs to get in here and get this kill, and finally he does, but that took way too long, and he took way too much damage in the process. Yeah, but this is looking like Fnatic are essentially getting overrun here. This is 7-1. Fnatic just had their money reset entirely. They are in a very, very bad position. It's 13,000 on Shocks on the other team, who's got 12, 2 and 2. So, I don't know. I mean, it's somewhat late in the day here if, if, you're, a, if you're a Swedish or a French player. Um, so, I guess, you know, maybe they've just been, you know, using the fact that they've been playing late today and just relaxing, and now they need to get, get warmed up here because they're... Yeah, they're caught with their pants down right now. Yeah, they're really getting hammered. And as far as the setup is concerned, I mean, they saw success with this in the past, so I like that Fnatic go back to what's worked. Two guys, I mean, stacking up basically on this pistol. Two guys in connector. NBK clears that up, so Crims and uh, Pronax are out, but now we still have two guys in restroom right now, and they do look like they want to try and wrap around. Smith's going to drop on one of them, and this will just be a perfect anti-eco round for Envy. Real quick cleanup in the end. Fnatic with the forward position is just not paying off. But that's an, I mean, it's a double eco scenario here. The problem is that Fnatic are between a rock and a hard place. Like, they need to eco to have more money to be able to get a solid round on the board, but they really need to get rounds on the board. So they are actually going to risk it. They're going to go for a four, uh, well, just for pistols. <clears throat> yeah. Don't know what to say about that, really. I mean, it's one of those judgment calls. It's hard to, to, to do it one way or the other. And um, they went for the for the full equipment, which means they, they basically got to start winning and, and make this 9-6. That's what they've just told themselves. Crims, forward push there, picks one. Could have been a double, but he just didn't have the bullets for it then. And JW's also going to pick up Happy, so maybe the pistols are just simply enough here. Great start. Now they just got to find a way to equalize things here. Good from Pronax, picks off the one, wants to run in and catch Smith's one bullet. He's essentially going to do it as he's on seven, uh, sorry, 27 health here, but MBK's coming through with a good double kill of his own. Hmm. And these guns are dropped like tantalizingly out of distance or out of range, right? They just want to pick up the guns. But Fnatic are instead having to play it very carefully, play the angles, basically. This is a smart play because they also know that that bomb has been dropped out in the open. They take the bomb and make their way back. 40 seconds. Are they going to pretend? They did make a little bit of noise like they were running back, and I think actually Pronax heard that, so now he's sort of moved himself, but now he can hear them going back here. This could be perfect. This should be the perfect read. Olaf Meister's going to move accordingly. They know what's up. Pronax, is he going to turn the corner? Try and get the shot on somebody here. Long range. There's the one. Second one in line. NBK dropping very low as well, and Pronax... Already with the double, and now there's only 17 seconds left. MPK gonna go down. Good pistol work coming out from Pronax, and a much needed round for Fnatic. Yeah, talk about the gamble paying off, right? Investing in the pistols, and they actually win the round. And now their money is actually pretty decent. They're gonna be able to full buy off of the back of this, so really solid round from the Fnatic. But, you know, when you're talking about money, man, Envy are still rich after that. 11 grand still in Joxy after a full buy. That's ridiculous. For your T side to have that much money, it's just not going to get any easier here. For any easier here for Fnatic, rather. And the fact that Fnatic, they don't have any cushion. If they lose this round, if Envy just keep trouncing them, they could be right back in pistols on the next round. Yeah, even an eight eight seven finish for Fnatic right now doesn't feel that convincing, but it's obviously better than the alternative. MBK putting a couple of shots through, and Envy back to playing somewhat slowly. 
Just uh, seeing if Fnatic are willing to take the challenge. Just they have before, and they've lost that challenge uh, almost every round. So if I was in, we'd do the same thing. Just say, well, if they're going to play aggressive, let, let them come. Mm -hmm. Well, there is an AWP over there right now. But it's oh. Pronax holding the corner, Pronax holding the barrels. Look at these smokes here. These, these are smokes that are going to end up in the B-bomb site. So they're going to look like, oh, it's a B-push coming here, smoking off. And they're all up at A. So this is very nice. JW looking at so many angles and trying to cover that new spot. He gets the shot on MVK. That's just JW doing uh, JW things. But he could have gone down then very easily. Yeah, and they still have the, I mean, they still have the full complement of defenders here on this A site right now for Fnatic. That's the problem with throwing those nades down to the lower level, is if you can see the traje trajectory, you know not to rotate because, hey, they're throwing them from A. They could still be going to the A site right now. So Fnatic just keeping their cool, and this is looking very good for them now. This is going to come down to the entry frags, and Kyoshima starts off strong. There's Kyoshima with a double, but then they line up for Crims, and Crims gets the triple kill. Nine seconds left on that clock. Envy had no time to mess around with, and it's just not meant to be this time. <clears throat> so Fnatic readjusting, and, and the way... NB, sorry, JW was covering that round. I think I saw, I think I've seen like half of an American match on this particular map. Mm -hmm. And the players I was watching, they actually, they were in the same spot where they're sort of halfway looking towards toilets and halfway looking over by Picnic and Long. And it seems like a really confusing position because if you Exposed. look, the, yeah, if you look the wrong way, you're dead. That's the main thing. That's my main concern with it because you have to stand by that truck. And if you don't have smokes or something <clears throat> to block off mid, it just feels like you're so exposed there. But it's the only way to hold long. Like they'll get up like practically onto the site if you don't have anybody watching it. So it's a really tricky position. I think we're gonna have to see how teams approach it. You know, if it isn't just JW pulling godlike shots, right? Yeah, it's hard to really rely on that. I mean. If he misses it, that's it. All of Meister with a really good forward position, and they didn't really count on that. They moved up a little bit too soon and didn't check the whole uh, of the toilets area. So they're a man down, and uh, JW is going to make it two men down. Happy charging up from behind. And we'll get that kill on Olaf Meister, who wasn't paying attention quite enough here. Happy will pick up a second kill, and Smith with one on JW. It's crumbling for Fnatic. We bring it back into a 2v2, but that's so dangerous. I believe the bomb has dropped out. Yes, the bomb has dropped out. Crims just darts forward to confirm that, that the bomb is still there. And now he knows that he has all the control. He has all of the power. And Pronax is rotated over as well. Kyoshima gets taken out. It's down to Happy now, who has 10 <coughs> HP to work with. And Crims has the perfect line onto that bomb at this point. So it's looking pretty grim here for the Frenchman. Happy really quite sure that they're going to try and boost over at some point, which you can just sort of look over that one. Jumping on a teammate's face, but... Um... He should be going down just about any second here. They're going to catch him in. Pronax with a double. Fnatic, sure, they win the round. But considering they got two pickoffs, you'd want a round like that to finish much stronger for the CT side, right? Um, but You're looking for a decisive victory in that case, especially on overpass like that. But, I mean, happy. You can't really <coughs> account for happy managing to land a long-range spray like that for the second kill. Still just really good work from happy, but... Now we have to see exactly how things develop here because there's two rounds, well, three rounds left in the half, pretty much, including this one. And Fnatic have actually gained a little bit of breathing room. But I, one thing I am liking is that Fnatic have thrown themselves out there at least. He's tried to not give Envy too much space to set up and to feel comfortable. They have been pushing around. It didn't work on short this time, that's for sure. But it is something that they've been doing more of. Yeah, it's really hard to account for Happy just coming in with a double entry and the rest of Envy, they weren't even at that bomb site, but now they're just going to say, well, all right, if we're going to get that kind of entry, it's going to be great. Grenade brings Flusher down to six health, and he's in a very bad spot. That's the third kill of the round for Happy. And he's going to get some help finally from Kiyoshima. Olaf Meister, well, I'm not sure why he's showing up here. He's, uh, he's showing a little bit late, huh? Oh. He Not goes down. Wow. That's... A, that's I, this is one of those risk versus reward kind of situations. Like, the chances that he wins a one on three from that position is almost none. But if he can end up getting a kill, what will he get from, from that? Like $300, $200 or something? It's almost yeah. nothing. So Well, with the AWP, I mean, he's going to get 100 bucks, right? Yeah, so, I mean, if he gets a couple of kills, that's like, two, you know, two or 300, that's like the best he could do, right? So why go for it? You just lost, a, I mean, a huge, huge uh, potential rifle they're gonna rebuy it regardless in the 14th round and pistol armor on everyone else but i'm not sure that was quite worth it now 
Furnax hiding near the smoke, and they're trying to get him. And actually, this is a really clever spot that people in matchmaking annoyingly keep using, because you see Shox thinks he's trying to spray through, but oh, he does know the angle. Well played on Shox there. It is actually really hard to know if you've hit people in there. No. HEs, man, chasing... <laughs> Chasing Crims out of there into the loving arms of NBK. Long range shots there, though. He almost takes out Smith before Smith can land a shot with the Tech 9. Yeah. Have you ever been caught by someone in matchmaking in that position that Sharks was trying to peek? Yeah. It only had to happen to me once that we all sort of just rushed through, and then someone just walked up behind us and killed us. I was like, nope, I'll never, I'll always wait for that smoke to go disappear now. But, um, all right, 10 4. Envy are in a envious position. Oh, indeed. Indeed. I mean, yeah, 10 4. I mean, this is like flying colors. And the T side of Envy tonight is just, they're on a totally different level. Because in, on Inferno as well, versus Hellraisers, they just beasted Hellraisers, despite the fact that Hellraisers started CT. Envy just had a magnificent T half. And tonight we're seeing more of that. I think Envy, I think Happy took it personal when Thor and said he wasn't a very good in game leader. Now, now he's, he's looking to prove that. He's like, oh, Pronax is third on your list? Well, hold on. Let me go ahead and just take care of that real quick. <laughs> he gets the last kill of the round as well. 11-4. Utterly decisive victory with Happy at 15. MBK at 16 and then 14 for Shox. So it's all, all in all looking really good for the Envy team. And um, on the Fnatic side, I guess it's mostly Pronax and Crims doing anything. Actually, the rest of them, Flusher, Olaf Meister, and JW, kind of not there right now. Yeah, kind of wonky. Yeah. Which is unusual, but uh, of course it can happen to even the best. And um, 16th round is coming up here. Not sure I can find too much excitement. I mean, yeah, if they win the pistol round, they're going to get more rounds. But um, winning the map is a very different thing, I feel like. I do like the dual ease here from MBK. Good yeah, choice. You know why he's using those? Why? Because they're color-coded. Because they're like envy colors, basically. Yeah. See that? Well, I, I was going to say it's anticipation for the other dualies if, uh, if they get put in the game. <laughs> that was my angle on it. One can always hope and dream, you know. But uh, in the meantime, they've done some damage to JW, and it looks like this is going to be a push towards the L-Bend here by the B-Bomb site. And uh, they've been spotted out already, so rotation should be coming in. Crims, flush it, though. Great openings here. MBK practically out of bullets. He's going to be jumped on by Olofmeister. And this is looking really good for the Swedish side, so great job on them. Yeah, this is looking very good indeed. Kyoshima rotating down, he gets spotted out, however. And this is just burning <coughs> valuable time off the clock at this point. So they decide to go change up the angle, but they're always going to have to worry about their backs unless they can kill off these guys. But Krims takes out Smiths and Olaf Meister. <laughs> <laughs> ah, oh man, gets oh. the knife. Yeah, that is good fun. I'm wondering if there's anything in the chat about that. I don't know if we can see the chat right now, but that was very good. Kyushima even realizing just at the right time, but... Um, and you know, this is, this is, he's doing this and sticking with it to piss off Shoxy. Because he knows that Shoxy hates people who knife. Well, I actually think Shoxy doesn't... I think, don't think Shoxy is going to be as angry when it's someone on the enemy team doing it. I think Shoxy's yeah. mostly mad when people on his own team take the risk and do it. Um, yeah. But sure, nobody likes getting knifed. Well, but yeah, it's not exactly a pleasant experience, right? But wow, NBK takes out Flusha. Flusha really going for the spray and pray there. Kyushima, wow. triple kill with the five seven, just like that. Single handedly turns around everything here for the Frenchman. That kind of leaves you speechless. I mean, it, I mean, we saw Fnatic have plenty of really, really good pistol rounds, and these two teams are. They're really the kings of utilizing all the pistols. It's not just the 5.7, it's not just the Tech 9. But, um, yeah, the C set, of course, as well. Like, they, they really know how to put it all to work. And great angle there. Kyushima coming up with a huge round. Grenade on out. Gonna soften up Happy, but Olaf Meister is definitely hunted over here. Trying to see if he can fight his way out. And now he actually has at least the chance to run somewhere else. He's got the time for it. Yeah, exactly. The fact that Happy goes down there, that's actually very unfortunate that Happy went for the repeek. But Shoxy is going to be able to rotate over here fairly quickly, and he's got eyes on short as well. So if Olaf Meister comes up here, this shouldn't be too good. Wow, he has the perfect timing to catch Shoxy jumping. This is actually a big mistake, and I think this is really going to mess with Envy's mind, with Envy's uh, mental game plan or mental state if they lose this round, because I think that they definitely think they've got this in the bag. Olaf Meister, 14 HP. This is the B site. He looks to his tag on the wall for inspiration. He knows what he has to do. 
Oh, and he gets a, the quad kill at the end, and um, he saves Fnatic. That could have probably been game over, at least on the first map, if they had lost it. That's like, that's too big a win. And Kiyoshima probably going to be looking at his teammates a little bit here and saying, come on, I gave you all of this. Exactly. He's got a triple kill. He ends up at three health. That's practically also confirming Half-Life 3. And um, we're going to be into the 18th round. UMP being picked up on, on uh, Flusher and Fnatic. I mean, it's a long way to the comeback, but they're fighting their way there. Slowly but surely. Envy, you know, giving him a little bit of a nudge, a little, you know, help <laughs> there. As well, seeing as how that definitely was an Envy round after Kyushima's display. Now JW gets tagged down fairly low here, so that jumping scout from Smith's doing the damage, slowing him up. Flush is taking a little bit of damage as well, so actually Envy setting it up not too bad here at the start at least. Kind of uh, putting Fnatic on notice, making sure that they don't get too comfortable pushing across the map. And I like the similar styles here, the similar approaches from both teams and their uh, CT's uh, side, you know, just getting out there and making sure that the other team knows, you know, that they have a presence on the map. It's not just, let's walk across the entire thing and set up for an A-take. Yeah, very true. Smiths, is he going to catch the guy? Oh, no, yeah, he won't. A, a little bit too much, but Kiyoshima now has a, a really long angle to peek down here, but JW will actually manage to take care of it. So, Fnatic proving that you can at least try and rush down there if you have enough people. But also they had worse weapons, so it's kind of hard to know if that's going to always work for you. Feels like it won't, but... Um, shotgun left on MBK. It's we've got no skin. Yeah, no skin, actually. He's pure with this one. I'm surprised. There's so many good Nova skins out there. Come on, MBK. Like a walnut? Just go for the old hunt man. Hunt, you know, the old man's hunting rifle? There you go. 900 bucks. Let's see. Cha-ching. Does it get more? Mm, probably not likely anymore. Actually, I'm going to get shot in the legs a little bit then. So 7-11 and Envy. Still not enough money to make the buy. So Fnatic are quite daring in a really decent position right now. Um, at least money-wise. This, uh, I mean, what's weird is, and it, it seemed true for, for Fnatic on their side, it didn't seem like Envy won a lot of their rounds by utilizing that new spot. Mm. So I mean, I'm I mean, has to say that that's what's causing like a change in the in the in the balance. It shouldn't. I could understand if we saw Envy keep rushing over there and they had like some new setup for it, but it seemed like this is just I don't know. They're playing better on the terrorist side right now, both teams apparently. Yeah, maybe we're witnessing like a shift in meta. You know, the teams have had so much experience now on this side. I like this setup though. That was actually a really cool trap being sprung by the NV team, having three people over here. And unfortunately, they got grenaded really low to begin with, so they uh, lost a couple of people there. But um, still a good idea, just uh, getting ready for it. And they're going to lose Smiths as well, leaving Happy and MBK. Happy going to go down. So it's all on MBK. That, I mean, I actually think they could have got a lot more out of that. Well, Kiyoshima unfortunately shot Shoxi in the back of the head, I think, as well. So that didn't, oh. that didn't help, right? When you're taking that much nade damage, you got to be real careful about your lines of sight. And there's the wall bang, but he still gets a second one. Three kills in the eco. That's yeah. not actually too bad. Oh, no, definitely not. I'm gonna, yeah, we will see DWP. And it's going to be picked up by Smiths as well. I was sort of wondering what was going on over there, but... Um Smith will be the man to do it. 11-8. And moving into the 20th round. Well, let's see now. Where do they take it? Looks like Smith's making his way down long. Do they have some kind of clever boost? Kyoshima looking like he might have been wanting to set something up there. Instead, it's going to be about as casual as it gets over there. Instead, it's going to be Action Sewer here. Fnatic just pushing in, trying to get control of short, and they will do that. NBK having to fall back, take a bit more of a passive position to hold this B site. But this is smart by Envy, at least not just getting overrun right out. Although Shoxy has dropped scarily low here. Taking a lot of damage initially. Never a fun time, especially when you have the rifle and you know you're supposed to be getting at least in uncomfortable range later on. Plenty of time for Fnatic to make their move. And as you can tell, it feels like Shox here is just not really trying to cover it as much as just getting the information if anyone's out there. Good shot from Smith, though. We'll pick off all of Meister and it's now in favor of Envy. It definitely feels like, or I mean, it definitely will be an A push coming out here. The question is, can Crims do enough down at B to make the difference? Can he force someone to rotate on out? Oh, I like this a lot here as well. JW up in this position. Oh, but that's it. The smoke, and it's this, it's just wide enough for the smoke to totally block off that entrance. And now they're going to have to move that bomb through mid. We can see they're on restroom. 
Bomb on Pronax making its way back around. Fresh smoke goes down, however, to block off this entrance. 20 seconds left here for Fnatic. They're going to try and run in here. They're just not going to have enough time. Bomb gets dropped. That's certainly not going to help. 15 seconds. We're approaching 10 seconds, and they have not got onto that site. They need to get all the kills at this point. Yeah, don't know why JW is getting more damage in there, but Smith will go down eventually. Two seconds left, and that will be the end of it. NBK with the final pickoff, and yeah, Fnatic kind of running out of time at the end there, which is unfortunate. And um, I, I thought actually that when they if they waited long enough, that Crims was going to be the guy to try and get a pickoff at B and sort of force Fnatic to make a rotation up at A, but um, mm -hmm. he just ended up joining them, and that was it. All right, let's see here. Because Olaf Meister had so much money, they do actually get a reasonable buy out of this though, Fnatic. So they definitely aren't out of it yet. Problem is, is that Envy are going to be feeling pretty confident with the scenario. And I'm not sure about Kyushima actually peeking down there or fully committing to the peak at least. Wow. Crims with a sick headshot on Smiths at long. That is beautiful. And now NBK, does he decide to take a risk? Does he decide to go for a push? It doesn't look like it. It looks like he prefers to hold passively here. Flusha would have been waiting for him as well. Hmm. I mean, yeah. I think Kyushima, like, overstepped just a little bit. He could have gone for a shoulder peek rather than fully committing and dropping both feet down there. You know, I'm no expert, but if there was a whole, you know, terrorist, counter-terrorist, you know, scenario unfolding in this town, because they've already pulled they pulled in the trucks and everything else, I'd probably stop the train from going by just so that people don't get, you know, shot in the crossfire, but... People get a nice little view of some action, I guess, going by, which is all right. Not that much action in the last 30 seconds here as Fnatic have really slowed down to a crawl, making sure they don't throw anybody away. And I mean, this actually, I think, this is actually too much for Fnatic. They should move closer than they have right now because they could end up losing this round out of simply running out of time. If they lose to NBK down here in the sewer, this is going to be horrendous. He's ready and waiting for them, and he does go down. That's a good pick off from Olofmeister. But 15 seconds left, and again, if you end up dying like that, you could... Really bad things could happen. Flusher catching Happy out, so they had a good plan going into Fnatic, but I think they, they still took a little bit too long that time. Agreed. Cutting it very close here. You know, maybe uh, Pronax is the one looking to go up one rank there. You know, he's like, Zeus waits oh, this long. That gets him second position in the <laughs> rankings. Okay, then. I see what I have I'm to do here. I'm then. I mean, I don't know. I just, it's, they, they took care of MBK just fine, so that was cool. But what if he gets that kill and he delays the push another, you know, six seconds? Yeah. All of a sudden, you could end up uh, in a very uncomfortable position if uh, if the rotation comes in as well from from um, sniper spot so got to be careful about that stuff but it's on 9 to 12 and Fnatic have actually brought themselves back in this game somehow i'm not sure why they're obviously still behind but they have the monetary lead and they're also just uh i don't know they're starting to hit their shots here yeah they really are starting to wake up and all of a sudden it looks like overpass is the new t-sided map i yeah, mean well, i wouldn't where, complain where did this come from not complain. I mean, we've kind of lost us two as the only CT side of the map in the pool, and since season isn't getting played much, which obviously also can be a CT side of the map if you know how to play it well, it would be fun if we had one more. Mm. Some shots being put out here, and uh, gotta be careful they don't walk into a trap. There is four people, I think, waiting, or at least three. I'm not sure if one of them is down below. Good grenade there on all of Meister, gonna force out Kiyoshima. So, um,. Yeah, slow but careful start here, and now it's kind of all unfolding as Flusher will pick up NBK, and it's going to be down to Shocks and Happy. Not a lot that they could do. No, not at all. Not sure if they realize, but the remaining two members here for Envy are still up on the same site, and there's Olafmeister picking off Shoxy. Looking for Happy. Now there's the step. Swaps back in time. Nice reactions there by Olafmeister. Does not get caught off guard. That would have been lethal. Happy up close with the CZ. Definitely would have got the job done there. But now... Two rounds separating them. This is one hell of a comeback. After that first half, I thought it would be lights out for Fnatic in the second half and that we'd be moving on to the next map, but yeah. somehow Fnatic are just climbing back into this. I mean, look at all of Meister. He was down there with Flusher and uh, JW for like five, six kills. I think he actually had five kills at some point uh, during the first half, and now he's all the way up to 19. He's overtaken Pronax. He's um, coming he's alive really well. Hmm. And set up as well, but now now we start to see a shift in how Envy are approaching this. Look at how passively they're holding back now on the on the on the side stick. A site, they haven't moved. They aren't even peeking out to long. They aren't taking any risks because Smith, last few times he's peeked at long, he's gotten his head taken <coughs> off. So 
It seems like now they're just like, okay, we're not even going to show ourselves. We're literally going to let them waste time trying to clear all the angles. And on B site, same thing, just holding the triangle basically over there. So Envy do not want to give Fnatic the entry frag. That's basically the name of their game plan right now. Fnatic, slow as they ever were here on the terrorist side. They they feel quite comfortable letting the clock tick all the way past the 30 second mark before they start to do anything. And you can tell that's going to happen because the bomb is still all the way back here, so only just making its way close enough. 30, 40 seconds or 30 seconds now, and it's it's a little bit scary, I have to say. Grenade here, is it going to be the right one? One, two, and oh, Kirishima has gone. Great execution from Fnatic here. Absolutely perfect, not giving Kirishima any time to move out. Bomb will be planted, but they're going to lose pro action in the meantime. Now they're falling back, and this is like a classic overpass play. And it worked on the other version. Maybe it's going to work on this one, too. Crims picks off shocks. And then BK trying to fight his way back. Yeah, this is going to be so hard, though. This is a very difficult shot to hit from Smiths. Olofmeister gets the peekaboo kill. Crims rotates in from long, holding that angle. Instead, it's going to be a 1v1. Now Happy versus Flusha, but Flush is in a great position. Happy does not have the time to get onto that bomb. Or rather, kill Flusha, then get onto the bomb. It's just not meant to be. And so Envy will be holding on to just one rifle here after this round. That's not good enough. Flusha actually running over to where Happy is lurking, though. And that's a free kill. So Happy at least gets that. You know, the party favor. You're not super excited about it, but, you know, candy isn't that bad either, right? You get something, right? It's something. Not really something worth writing home about. But yeah, 11, 12. They've got the one rifle in play right now. And that, that plant that we just saw, smoking off and planting, instead of trying to clear the whole bomb site, just put the bomb down in front. We've seen it emulated as well on what this is like an emulation of what happens on other maps, like Inferno, for instance, mm -hmm. where people, uh, actually in both bomb sites, try and just plant the bomb instead of clearing the whole bomb site. It's a, it's a good philosophy, really. Good way of approaching playing the terrorist side. And on this map, it worked really well on the past. Seems to be possible here as well. Um, and that's going to put them in a great position right now. I'm really impressed with the uh, Cribs right now, man. First half, he was the one doing a lot of the work for Fnatic, and here, man, he's just landing shot after shot. So the pressure is just on. Fnatic now just confidently running onto this side at this point. They All they know is that they know they just have to deal with one M4. NBK has managed to pick up an AK, though, picking off Flushes. So that's going to be all right. There's a couple of rifles here for Envy to work with. But they are managing to back the bomb back towards long, looking towards that mid-connector. Smiths is currently lurking around here, though. But the big thing, yeah, Olofmeister, exactly. Our observer gunner is right here. It's Olofmeister who is the big key, because he's cleared out the B-bomb side. The only thing is they don't know there's a guy in connector that they could run into. So this is really strange. They're sort of all sandwiching each other at the moment, which certainly sounds sexy, but when they have guns, it's going to be a different matter altogether. Olofmeister goes down. And JW wanting to peek in. Yeah, he doesn't get the flick. Good double kill from Happy. He's going to bring it into a 2v2, and now with 23 seconds left. Happy's picked up a triple in total, but he's going to be alone, and this is not going to work out. He goes down at the end. That was very, very close to working out for Envy. Mm. Yeah, and at this point, man, Envy, they need more than just kills. Like, kills is great, is fine and dandy, but there's 10,000 still on Pronax and more than enough left on the rest of the team. They need to just win here flat out. And this is the round to do it in. 12-12 is far too close. I'm still amazed at how few rounds Envy have actually managed to pick up in this second half. If we could bring up the, the rounds, actually, real quick, just to take a look at it. Like, one round. That is ludicrous. For overpass as well. I mean, is it this drastic, the change? Or are the, these teams just so damn good at T-side now? Feels like quite a while since we've seen them play these maps. There's been some evolution going on. NBK spots a man out in sore, though. Dodges the wall bang, but now there's going to be two guys pushing up short very quickly, and he just gets caught completely out in the open. Oh. Good return from Crims as well there, as Pronax did go down. Now they've smoked it off, making sure that he can't really easily get through. All of my guess, he gets caught there. Just uh, Shocks is ready at the edge of the smoke. So now they've at least managed to equalize, and they're going to try and boost up to look over the wall, I think, on the NV side. Yeah, they are making that boost work, which is quite cool. Oh, and it looks all the way back there. Wow. Yeah, that is very cool. But unfortunately for them, JW is holding behind the pillar, and it's no angle there to work with. 10 HP on JW, but they're buying the time. 3v3 retake scenario here. Kyushima walks up, gets the sprayed out, looks for the second one. Not going to get it, but Shoxie is there to save the day. Flush is still alive on short. However, just knows he has to go for the wall bank. Just spraying wildly, and he's not going to get it. How does that happen, Flusha? 
I think that that looked like he knew exactly <coughs> what, like he thought he knew what the angle was, and then he was just uh, a little bit off to the left, which is unfortunate. That's actually one of the few times we've seen them go to B and it doesn't work out, because I'm pretty sure a lot of the terrorist rounds have been towards A on both sides right here. Like, they've, they've done it with A, but they haven't really utilized the new position that much. I mean, I thought we'd see a lot more, but I mean, it seems like the most successful round so far have been towards the A bomb side, really. So, um, <clears throat> we'll see if Fnatic go back to that. Yeah. Why wouldn't they? Yeah, exactly. Why wouldn't they, right? And now, look, you know, already attention mid, attention long. They're going to be able to clear these par parts of the map out. Olaf Meister already looking for that duel versus MBK and Connector, but it's not meant to be this time. Olaf, you're going to have to be patient. Because Envy, once again, holding very ca very careful passive play coming out of the Frenchman, actually. Because, again, they started off the rounds, you know, kind of pushing out there, throwing their weight around making sure that Fnatic couldn't get too comfortable on the map. And now Fnatic know they can go for boosts like this because they've checked everywhere. Nobody is here. And if Kyoshima takes a step just a little bit further, he's going to be very sad indeed. Look at that, Kyoshima. Oh. He's just dancing. It's like a pixel. He stops just short every single time. So creepy, isn't it? That's crazy. Well, JW gets tired of waiting, decides to move forward, and Kyoshima spots it and does not want to re-peek it again now. Just smokes it off. JW so close right there. Kyoshima goes down. JW. I think he jumped over and just could see out of the smoke. And that was enough to fetch him a kill. And now again, look at the clock. Almost no time left at all here. 20 seconds there. Rotating the bomb back to B, which once again is cleared. Fnatic have checked that out. So they're forcing everyone from enemy to get up here while B bomb sign is slowly being evacuated from CT forces. And Happy's going to go down as well. Crims doing good work over by the bank. He can just try and stay alive here. But MBK is going to find him. They're still in a good position though. Oh, and look at this double setup here. This is going to... If they find Flusher here, no way are they going to check for Pronax. Mm -hmm. No, this is really sneaky if they go through here. But it looks like instead it's going to be Shoxy walking in and failing to get the kill on Pronax. And that is pretty much curtains here. NBK looks like he wants to hang around. He will pick up the kill on Pronax, but the likelihood of him finding Flusha in time, yeah, it's looking pretty slim. And he decides to bail out. That's the right call to make at this point. You're not going to get it. And it feels like once again, you know, you're just running out of here. Is he going to be able to hold on to the gun, though? He's dancing around a lot. He's making noise. Flusha. Hoping to get lucky, but he's not going to get it. Yeah, I kind of wish Flusher would have run for that one, because he actually would have had some, some money to work with regardless. But it's 13-13, and Envy, well, they will try and force up the best that they can, which is not going to be absolutely perfect, but it won't be completely horrendous either. Um, Nova Shark can be put into play uh, multiple ways, and Kyoshima has a FAMAS as well. Good job there. So 13-13. We are looking to see if they can win this, because if not, then Fnatic can probably make this, make this map point. They're probably going to bounce up to 15 rounds, because I'm pretty sure CT side will have pretty much no money at that point. All right, well, let's see here. Already pushing up long once again. Pretty much tried and true. Tactics, Crims. Crims just winning versus Shoxy. That pretty much tombs it right there. That tells you the story. Crims is just so on point. Smith Ooh. does return and take out Pronax, however, and that drops the bomb in mid. He has to be very careful now, however, because he is getting flanked, and Olfmeister stepping. Olfmeister expecting Smith to have backed up by now. Yeah, definitely has so. Oh, he misses it, and Olfmeister, that was a gift that he just could not resist. That's such a shame, because Smith definitely played that uh, quite well. Now they're trying to see if they can boost up and look over the car here. They're really trying to come up with new, spot, new stuff here, uh, almost on the fly, it seems. They've got 40 seconds left on the clock, and... There is still a Fnatic member lurking down towards the B bomb site, just outside of it. But they need this opening up at A if they want to make their way through with the bomb. Well, they're practically on this bomb site already, Fnatic. And they're just peeking around Kyoshima, holding very passively right now. But JW misses the shot, and Kyoshima lands his spray. That was big. Happy manages to take out Olaf and Happy with the double kill. Just like that, Fnatic looked poised to take that site. If, if JW kills Kyoshima. That could it can spin out of control so quickly because then they can just go crashing onto Happy, take him out quickly, and get the bomb plant. Instead, JW uncharacteristically missing a shot there, and when his team really needed it because the money is pretty uh, spread out right now on Fnatic. A couple of them can afford rifles, but the rest of them pistols. Yeah, and I think they also I mean they also look like they tunneled vision just a little bit on Kiyoshima. They just mm -hmm. forgot about the fact that there could be anyone else on that side. So they said, let's just go and find him while he's reloading. And maybe a decent idea, but ultimately, 
ended up costing them the round. Now, 14 to 13, and Envy finally coming up with a round. It seems like it's been a while since they've been winning anything, but um, they might be able to close this out. Kiyoshima going to pick up Flusher. They just need to survive against this force up that's actually occurred on the, on the Fnatic side as well. I really like that setup at long between, for Envy. Not just Kiyoshima alone or Smiths alone. Two people there to cover the angles and make sure that one can watch one angle hard, the other is watching that person's back. Much better defense, uh, defensive setup. But now it looks like it is going to be the push up short. Pronax taking point. Flash is going over. Happy somehow shooting right between all of them. What was that? He lands the shot on JW there, though. That was crucial. Gets the follow-up on Olaf Meister. And there's only one rifle left. It's going to be on Pronax, but not for long. No backing out of that one. Yeah, good that he managed to recover, because that looked like, you know, shooting fish in a barrel, but actually missing all of them regardless. Right? <laughs> that was really weird. That was, that's just right of the... Uh, actually, you know, we can have that right here. Instant replay? Or did they somehow miss it? Damn. Yeah, maybe we did. I mean, it, it, it was a missed shot. I'm guessing we don't need to replay it, but uh, it, it, it was pretty impressive, actually. That yeah, would yeah, be a hard shot to miss if you were trying to shoot between people at that point. Exactly, right? It's only because he was actually trying to land the shot. Well, we're moving into um, the 29th round, and it is map point for Envy. They've really played this well to come back in the game because they lost a lot of rounds in a row. Um, and it looked like Fnatic were going to take it, but just when it really mattered, uh, they've brought it back, and now they just need to do it one more time, and they're going to be good to go. And they already dropped all of Meister over here. Pronax is the only one with a rifle currently on the Fnatic team. They're going to be quick in A, not really slowing down for much. Sharks could get caught. He will get caught, and they're going to catch Happy as well. Oh, no. Envy, now is not the time to be giving it up. They're coming back from different angles here. JW, I think he ended up flanking NBK coming through back then, and that is going to be a hard spot for Envy. What's their money like right now on the CT side? Oh, they'll have enough. Yeah. Actually, that's surprisingly good. I thought that they would have a bit less there for sure. Now, actually, I mean, they, if they, they save these rifles, buy. they will. If they lose these rifles, they're going to be in a really tough spot. Is it Crims who's on a mission right now? I think it is. Yeah. Oh, Flusha as well is all the way back here. So, I mean, it's like JW, Flusha, they're going to box them in. Flusha within lethal range makes it look easy. Takes out Kyushima. He has his AWP here for the second man. Goes for the shot. And Smith stands his ground and yeah, manages to live through just that. just missed the shot. He even, like, pre-aim, he, he was fully aware. He just, I think, shot right under his leg. So that was a little bit unfortunate for him. If they lost both those rifles, I mean, that would have been a lot less impressive for Envious just in cause, because they, they'd have, like, a... A lot worse rifles, essentially. They didn't definitely have enough to buy on. Like, they had enough to buy on everyone, but it would have been without a bunch of grenades. I think they want to test just how fireproof Olaf Meister is. Three incendiaries picked up, lots of smokes. Envy getting fairly well geared out here, actually, considering they lost that last rifle. But again, going for an aggressive hold here. And this is when they need to change it up, but this is not going to go well. The, this is not going to go well. They pick up the first one. There's the flash out. Shoxy needs to go big here. Shoxy needs to get another one. He's only going to get the one. Smith is there to lend a hand as well at range, but that's not good enough right now. They need to get a man advantage to shut down Fnatic. That's like the money flashbang, but then you'd need, I don't know, a Negev to try and spray everyone down. It's, it's you know, they, they end up spreading out so much, Fnatic, that it's really hard for them to do anything. Molotov going to buy a little bit of time here, but it's still a 3v3. Fnatic trying to look for overtime. Pick off there on MBK, looking very good now for Fnatic. And in overtime, I don't know, Envy's got to be really frustrated if this goes to overtime. And Happy doing his best to try and prevent it. 35 seconds left. Bomb going to make its way out on JW because they got Flusher down there. But now Flusher's left the bomb site, which is a little bit tricky. They've got to be careful they don't give Smith a way back in. They won't. Flusher standing his ground. And now it's all in Happy. Man, and Happy is furious right now. I can assure you of that. Smith's running out there in the open like that. Not very solid work. Happy with the wall bang through, though. He's done messing around. That smoke goes down, kind of blocking it out. Happy, however, cannot look at his back. Flusha, once again, just with the perfect lurk. And he, like, Flusha, he doesn't have many frags, but every frag pretty much is like NBK, B site, him lurking in, just picking off NBK, and then forcing envy into these awkward positions where they have to make up their mind is the bomb going to go a or b after all but happy man every single time it just seems like he's the one who has to step up to rescue the day to yeah. save envy i mean he's got uh, what 26 frags 28 frags i think it says and there's 29 on crims so um overall i mean there's been a few players in this game that's really taken off yeah i'm really impressed i mean happy every single time <coughs> nvk 
after a terrific, I mean, it's still MVK dropping 26 frags in regular time as well as just really good work. So it's it's rough. It's really rough. I mean, I think a lot of it comes down to, at least in this round, Kyushima not being able to capitalize on that first kill. If he could have traded one for one, and then Shoxi peeks out <coughs> and trades one for one, maybe, you know, he maybe gets a, that second one right. Yeah. That's, I think that's the linchpin right there is the fact that Kyushima, he peeks out into four guys and, well, you know, can you really blame him for dying in that kind of scenario? I don't know. If he could have picked up one, though, that would have been just perfect for uh, Envy. Yeah, they had also made their way a little bit past by the time he started firing, so he mm -hmm. was facing uh, multiple opponents at the same time instead of, you know, if he could have got, like, the instant headshot on someone, maybe he could have fallen back and they could have, like, grouped up or something. That, that was just a very unfortunate situation. They made a lot of noise coming up, but I don't think they realized there was that many people either. Yeah. They maybe thought, like, all right, it's going to be, like, two people coming and there's four instead. Uh, regardless... I mean, I guess we could say good job to Fnatic as well, just because of how far behind they were on that first half. I mean, it looked horrendous for them. And then, you know, they sort of brought it back anyway. I'm thinking this is, yeah, this has got everything to do with the fact that we've got two <coughs> teams that are just, that just have phenomenal aimers. And if you give them an opening, they will punish you right. And also two teams that I don't think have spent an enormous amount of time on the, on this map since the changes. Probably not. It, it definitely feels like they haven't... Um, CT side, you need to refine that. You need yeah. to find the tricks. You need to know where to peek and the timings and everything, right? And it feels like things have changed quite a bit on that upper site. So that's still like guys peeking at the wrong time or just not getting the coordination down quite right. And when you have JW or Crims yeah. on the other side, they're just going to take your face off. Been a big fan of uh, the way the Fnatic have sort of decided to put pressure on A and then left, you know, Crims walking in or a Flusher or someone walking in yeah. behind. Um, that That's... That seems like a really, really good approach. Um, so they should keep doing that if they can. Uh, but it's always a little bit risky. But I mean, it's no. it's been working out a couple of times for them. It's, it's just like I love how similar both of these teams can be, though, because really, you know, it's hard to tell the difference between the two of them. Each T side was very similar. Yeah. CT side, uh, Envy did play a bit more passively earlier than Fnatic, but I think yeah. that Envy had a bit more, a few more opportunities as far as like saving rifles and having a little bit more breathing room where it came to the money. It seemed like Fnatic were just never had any money in that first half yeah. past the beginning, the first buy round, so that changed it up a little bit. I mean, something that neither team spent a lot of time on, Fnatic were sort of down and connected to begin with, with a couple of people on the stairwell and stuff, but uh, we've seen a bunch of teams actually try and work uh, the connector and the sewer area sort of jointly so that people from either area can back each other up mm -hmm. and have like a huge pressure in the middle of the map. But it seemed like that's not... Uh, it's not Envy's uh, style. No, not, not yet anyway. Fnatic tried like a little bit, but, but didn't really stick with it. So not sure what that's about, mm. but... Um, yeah, it's uh, it's. I'm I'm surprised. I'm interested. We we have to sort of relearn over past at this point, just a little bit at least. Uh, B bomb sound hasn't changed, but A obviously a big change. I'm wondering what like specialist teams are thinking right now, like Hellraisers, VP, you know, because two very solid, very solid uh, overpass teams. You know what they would look like on this map. I mean, of course we're talking about Envy, which we're pretty much like the kings of the castle when it came to overpass. But I want to see more from like other teams who have experience on the map, who who do good work on it. Yeah, I think we're just going to have to sit down and learn a little bit more. But overpass, uh, overtime on overpass, always a good thing. And um, if you are just joining us, then you're pretty much right on time. These are the two best teams in the world, essentially, playing each other. And this is the FPS, our first person lover.com Young Borg Challenge. Good opening from Crims to take down Happy. It's going to give them a straight entrance into the B site. Are they realizing Shox is here? Looks like not. And he's going to get the first kill. Goes for a second one. As Kyushima also takes down all of Meister and things went from very good to very bad in the space of just two seconds there for Fnatic. Oh, and he's just off with the spray as well. Shoxy. Smith up from on high will take out JW, however. And it seems like they have an idea of where the last man is standing. Over on short, it's going to be Flusha once again working his way. They traded places, and he adjusts his spray in time. Nicely done there, but a fresh smoke goes down. He's going to go barreling through, but it's not going to be fast enough. And the defuse will come through for Kyushima, who actually didn't even have a kit. Yeah, which is scary, isn't it? What if Flusha had uh, sat down and like got the headshot through somehow? That could have actually cancelled the round essentially for Envy, but they'll win the first round of the overtime and great play from Shox though. That, you know, patient and then getting the, both those kills, that changed everything. Absolutely. And considering how difficult it's been for both of these teams to get CT rounds on the side, on, on, you know, in the regular time, for them to start off and pick up a CT round here, that's huge for Envy. Now they could probably even lose the next two and feel pretty decent about it. So pressure on Fnatic now to pick up the remaining two rounds in this half. 
And so far, again, they're going for what works. You know, press, um, it looks like pressure on B. Not pressure on B, pressure on long to begin with. But yeah. no success. Oh, and shots with the bomb kill right there. Pronax going down. And over on long, I like the fact that they have Kiyoshima playing close. Smith's obviously going to go down right here. Oh, no! All of Meister, how do you miss that kill? Is this the is this the tipping point? Is this where Fnatic just crumble? Yeah, I mean I probably cursed all of my then. I'm really sorry because that was that was a free kill essentially. It's not get right, MVK. He's Swedish, but I mean he heard him running in and he had the the wrong pit rifle out and everything. Like that was just that was that looked like all of my just being a little bit. Uh, I don't know, caught sleeping maybe. Whoa, and Flush is going to hold on to that AWP glass cannon. Kiyoshima with the auto sniper though. Double auto sniper. Smith's going for it. What are they doing in this round? Happy with an AWP? Like that's, this is very weird. This is Envy potentially throwing away a round right here. Yeah, that could be really risky. Lots of Molotovs going out though, and JW burning just a tiny bit. Shocks. Waiting down on the slope in that B bomb site, and uh, a lot of smoke going off as well. He just wants to find someone to shoot at, but he's essentially going to get grenaded out of the bomb site. There's the auto sniper from Kiyoshima, though, picking off Crims and doing good damage to Flusher as well. And Smith's coming in with another kill in between here. MBK looking for Pronax, and they're going to end up sort of joining up with Smith to get the kill. All of Meister would have been great if the bomb had been down for him to come up from behind like this, but now. Probably a little bit too late. He goes down, and it's three rounds in a row for Envy, just like that. That was incredibly quick compared to what was happening in the regular rounds. Oh my gosh. Like, how fast that all yeah. happened. Fnatic not wasting any time, just going straight for sights after that first round. Second round, they just got picked off everywhere. And Fnatic making a bit of a strange choice, right? Because they win so many rounds on the regular time at A bomb site. They go to overtime, and they end up throwing two rounds away at B, mm. which is just, you know, just looking at the regular time, statistically speaking, doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. A lot of mixed calls there. And, the, I mean, it's going to be the first team to 19. So Envy, all they need is one round on their T side right now to collect the first map in this best of three. So it's looking very good right now for them, considering the, the, the past results. And JW has already been tagged down to 17. So potentially a leg shot there, a duel between him and Happy. Happy is certainly going to be happy about the results of that. Not too bad at all. Flash are hiding edge of the smoke by the toilets. I like the fact that they have this stronger presence uh, forward in the middle or uh, over by the A-bomb site here. On the Fnatic side, just trying to see if they can force Envy to really fight for this position here. Olaf waiting, ready and waiting, but Smith will just walk out and drop him. And that's going to be the start that they need. Flusher takes one and actually thought he was going to go down then, but Shox also falls and now it's looking even better for Fnatic. And just trading. They're also controlling the bomb all the way over by the uh, cafe. Oh, wow. And Flush just annihilates MDK there. That's a big two man advantage now. The bomb is dropped out in the middle of nowhere as well. Smiths, they have to know that he's waiting out here. Looking for the shot, not connecting on either one. And then all three of them just gang up on him, take him out. Happy is the last man alive. He was trying to lurk, but not this time, Happy. You, there will be no, no glimmer of hope, nothing. Look for a moment like they were saving three AWPs, but that's not going to be the case. 18-16, and the second round of the overtime is coming up here. And again, as you pointed out, Samler, it's it's just one slip up here for Fnatic, and the round or the map goes in favor of Envy. But there's always double overtime. Oh, yeah, dude. And triple, quadruple. Be fitting between these two monsters as well, right? Oh, hell yeah. I will smoke early on and again fanatic with that mid presence making it difficult to predict nbk right now looking real good and he's just gonna walk right into olaf meister great shot there by olaf quick reactions smith charging on over gonna go down and olaf meister also picks up happy so this is just a steamroll around coming out here from fanatic and nb had a couple of those in the overtime as well so it really is back and forth at this point shocks 1v4 Hard for him to find a, a way out of this position. And this is looking like double overtime right now. It's screaming it. Because Envy, if they cannot somehow find a way to get a plant in this situation, they're going to be very low on money. As we can see right now, you know, just... They'll be able to get together a reasonable buy, but AWPs, those are going to be out of the question, I'm pretty sure. Oh. Well, 
Ooh. Nice work there by Shoxy. Yeah, but he's also getting flanked, and there's a guy waiting for him inside the A-bomb site. So the longer this takes, the worse he's going to be, the more dead he's going to be, essentially. Whether he knows it or not. It's JW to take the last kill there. 17-18. We're moving into the last round of the first uh, overtime. Could be a second one coming up. Unless Envy can come up with something cool here. Now, they did have the money just for a 3, 4 AKs, in fact. And um, Smith's going to have a Tech 9 instead. And they actually have, like, a couple of smokes as well. So this is not the worst buy in the world. But um, they need they need an entrance. Yeah, they need to find some kind of way to deal with this uh, forward pressure that's coming out. And they seem to go for Connector this time around. Last time around, it was all of Meister with the AWP, and that's what they're thinking. That's what they were trying to adjust for. But Flush against the double spray down, takes out MVK and Happy, and that cannot be allowed to happen. They put two guys through Connector that time to see if they could actually trade with Olaf. If Olaf is holding close again, they'll get him. But wow. Shoxy gets a running headshot on Flush, so that's big. Brings it back to a three on four at least. But then JW is in, and Crims with the flank, and it just completely falls apart for Envy. Smith, good shot there onto Pronax. That was definitely impressive, but it probably won't alter the outcome of the round here. Walking right in, and JW will miss a shot, but he's still going to get the kill. 18 18, and it's going to be double overtime with a 33 facts on Crims. I mean, it's not quite Kenny with his 50, but <laughs> still pretty good. Uh, he's working his way there. Actually, yeah, Crims has certainly slowed down as well, because wasn't he at like 28? Yeah, I think so. At the end of regular time. So Crims pretty calm. Uh, Pretty calm and collected in this uh, in this overtime, <laughs> but now we get to see can Envy actually get on the board? Apparently, Overpass has gone back to being a CT-sided map. Anders, overtime has brought it out in them. You know they remember how to hold angles and catch people off guard. Switch Reno. Did we? No, I was going to say maybe we skip past midnight. It's a new day, so you know opposite day is gone. But, um, <laughs> not quite yet. Another 30 minutes, at least Swedish time, before we uh, change over to that. Well, a minute, 30 seconds. They're moving quite fast up towards the playground, and they're going to run into Crims. You said he was out of action for a bit somewhere, and maybe he, he took that personally. Gets him with the kill, but Smith will stop him. Still a really good trade coming out right now for the Fnatic team, and Flusher getting caught a little bit uh, too aggressive, or a little bit too happy there, just skipping along. Yeah, but the Boostmeister is on the hunt right now, and he's already got the flank as well. Happy has no idea that there's somebody behind him. Look at how he's holding this angle. It's a free kill. Olaf, do you oh. go for the knife? Oh, he checks. He looks back. He's going to do it. He sees his knife. He sees Happy's knife. I think he made a noise then and <laughs> sort of gave up on it. He had the opportunity. Oh, I love it, Olaf. That's the kind of style play that's really going to get in your enemy's head. That's going to mess with them. If he'd have got the knife, but I like how he didn't want to take the risk. He just wanted to mess with them just enough, right? I think if he hadn't made that noise jumping up, he would have gone for it. But um, that was that was a little <laughs> bit too much, even for him. Or MBK here. I mean, he's probably thinking, I get one pick off. Maybe I can get myself in a position where I can at least put the bomb down here. I have a smoke as well, so, you know, one kill, smoke off, put the bomb down real quick. Mm -hmm. But they're holding so very passively right now. Like Olaf Meister, back of the site. Waiting in bank. They still have a man on the side himself. That's Pronax. Wow, what a shot there by NBK. Yeah, very good. Not going to be good enough, sadly. Pronax was there lurking. But that was a very nice shot by NBK. 19-18. At this point, we need the first team to 22 rounds to, uh, to take the victory here. See how that's going to unfold. It's looking pretty grim here for the Frenchman, I think. Right now, Fnatic, have, they've, they've just come alive again. <clears throat> and well, now, Envy look like they want to change the pace a little bit. They've been spending a lot of time on A and mid, getting picked apart. Now it's time to go towards B. But Fronax, he spotted them out in sewer. He's going to have a nice early smoke here. So this, this point of entry is gone. And JW, he's already waiting to see if anybody's going to be working their way back around. Look at Flusher just uh, putting some shots out there. Double grenade on there. Actually almost lands the exact same spot. So that's kind of cool from Fnatic. Having uh, that right there practiced. Smith moving all the way up through connector. Olaf Meister's there and he spots the bomb as well. Gets the killing, goes for a second one, but he's going to get shot down by shocks. Just taking a bit too long to land that second kill there. And Crims will fortunately for them return on Kiyoshima, which is going to put Fnatic with a one-man lead. And happy... I mean, he's been carrying his team a lot today. Maybe he could find an opening at B and um, and make an entrance happen. There's only one guy holding down here. 
And that's very curious for, for Fnatic, I feel like. Pronax, I think he saw that. Yeah, and Happy saw it as well. Oh, wow, and Pronax. It's like time for a nap, Happy. That's it. Very clean work there by Pronax. Changes up his position as well, so he can't get predicted. I mean, look at that. JW comes in, fills the gap. Pronax tells him that somebody's coming through the main entrance. JW rotates in time. Just great communication right now on Fnatic's side. This is very nicely done, and JW just changing it up. Catching Smith off guard, and flicks onto Shox. Shox, no time to react. That was just like the total package right there. The defense from Fnatic. Crisp, clean communication coming out, and that just nets them the win. Yeah, and they're gonna be um they're gonna be in an interesting position now. Envy again with very little money. Uh considering they started with ten thousand, they've bought here whatever they could, but it's you know, one Galil, one tech nine, and it's not that super impressive. Are they gonna go for a standard B rush here? They're certainly lining up for it, and JW is gonna miss the shot. He's gonna make it just back around the corner here. Smoke a grenade out as well, but they keep running at him and he will finally take a kill on one of them. Pronax with a good return and flushes there as well to help out. So this is not looking good for Envy at all. They get the one kill in, but they need a lot more right now. And the bomb is finally going to make it onto this site. Shoxy there to throw a fresh smoke down, perhaps trying to bait them out into the open. Flush is just going for some wall bank. Or at least some spray. Oh, well, look at this clever positioning here by Olaf Meister. He spots him. Not going to hit the jump shot. Come on, Olaf. It's not a scout you got in your hands. But that's a lot of information gained. Yeah, they're going to find uh, the one Kiyoshima now. 1v3 goes for the spray, and they sort of almost lined up, but not quite enough here. So at the end, it will be 21-18. Three rounds in a row for Fnatic on their CT half now. Second half of uh, the second overtime is coming up. And we'll see. Now Envy's actually in a weird position where they could end up just making a simple mistake and lose the map. Yep, and I'm thinking again, it's the return. Like, it seemed like it had gone away for a little bit there. Dreamhack Winter obviously, you know, winning that. But I mean, it like the, the, the this difficulty with closing maps. You know, it's what plagued the last LDLC lineup. Now that they've joined up with Envy, you know, I'm sure that they were hoping, you know, that they would still keep powering on and taking those first place uh, oh. spots. But it's looking Boy, pretty rough right smoke. now. That is All a right. very cool smoke. That's nice. They're going to power on behind this. Fnatic have a plan to try and win just the one round. It involves a lot of speed. They're moving very slowly in the normal time where they were playing Terrace, just moving up real slow towards the A-bomb side and eventually getting a couple of pickoffs. This time, it's not quite going to be the case. Just charging on in here. Smith's getting smoked off as well, trying to see if he can make the breakthrough. He will. NBK with a kill as well. And this looks like Fnatic have hit a brick wall heading into the A-bomb site here. Crim's last man standing. They had a they definitely had a plan. But I don't think it was this. Yeah, I don't I definitely don't think that that was it. I think that they were just hoping that they would catch a forward position. Like Envy basically trying to play aggressive. I think that's exactly what they were hoping for. <clears throat> and well, Crim's I think it was like more about, you know, the Blitzkrieg, you know, get onto that bomb site before Fnatic even knew they were there. And then deal with them, deal with them if they try and come back onto the site to retake, obviously, if they're coming back in from mid, leave a lurker behind or something. But I think they were definitely hoping to find at least just like one guy on that site, not two. So, Fnatic, well, they, worth going for the gamble. They have a couple of rounds still, so I mean, it's not the end of the world. They could go for something aggressive just to try and shake things up. I'm not going to fault them for that, for sure. As far as uh, Envy are concerned right now, that's going to be a bit of a breath of fresh air. They pick up one. <laughs> Shoxy getting tagged down in connector, and he goes for the repeak. Olaf Meister punishes him for the audacity. <clears throat> yeah, but Smiths, he did get one kill in return, and they dropped Crims, the top frag guy, I think 37 or some kills at the moment. So that's, gonna, that's definitely going to make a big difference here. Now at 4v4, you could tell that Fnatic are sort of back to the, the old pace. They're trying to see if they can change it up again, and it worked so well for them towards A. Just leave Flusher down here at B, put pressure on A, and see if he can't get into to B and, and lock it out. Although MBK is in a very strong position right here. Yeah, this is quite clever. And he's even going to make it sound like he's, some, he's somewhere on the site. I'm not here right now, Flusher. There he is. Spots the legs, picks it up. That's very clean work by MBK. Oh. Smith puts Olaf Meister to slave. Smith gets the double kill, takes out JW. And Kiyoshima catches Pronax working in from long. All of a sudden, Envy are remembering how to play CT side as well. Envy are not done yet. What is going on? 
if I've, lots of lots of overtime is what uh, we're in store for here because if they just keep winning all their CT side rounds, I don't know if it's in the rules somewhere if there's like a limit to overtime. Like how many overtimes can actually happen? Like once we get to 10, both teams just lose and they just like, you yeah. know, LGB wins the tournament. <laughs> That's it. You've, you've disgraced LGB. yourselves. <laughs> You're just out. Well, they're going to try and uh, see if they can go for B once again here, Fnatic. And uh, Smoke and Molotov at the same time. Bit of a waste of uh, $600 there, but um, Smoke at least will still be in place to try and see if they can uh, find a little bit of more time here on the Envy side. Already got three people in the bomb side, including the guy up on uh, Sniper Spot. So should be a fairly manageable defense coming out. Olofmeister, is he going to be backstabbing once again? They tried that last time for the B push and it really didn't work out because they all got killer B before Olof got anything done. And it seems like it's the same recipe this time. Olofmeister dies and it's on Flusher here. 1v4. And we're looking at double overtime. No, sorry, triple overtime. Triple overtime. It's not every day we get to see this. And it is fitting it's between both of these teams. NBK deciding to wake up. I mean, look at the frags right now. It's like 33, 35, 35. That's very solid work on the CT side. Crims is the one who's doing the majority of the work over on Fnatic side, at least. It seems 37 frags from him. But, um... At 31 on Olaf as well. Yeah, Olaf Meister's <clears throat> actually come alive as well towards the end of that second half and into overtime. He's really starting to light him up. JW, surprisingly enough, is actually the one who's, who's not had the most luck. So... Now we go into a second round of overtime here, ladies and gents. This is going to be the first to, to pick up four rounds here. So we're looking at 25, first to 25. Let's we'll see. Fnatic. Could they use all of my AWP to find an opening? Crim's getting tickled a bit through the smoke. Not going to be too happy about that one. But you could see Olofmeister sort of wedging his way forward. But he looks the wrong way. And he actually had no backup there. So there's no one that can return the kill. Smith finds JW all the way by Picnic. And now it's going to be really tricky. I think they wanted to do it in reverse this time. They needed to pick up at A and then go to B. But um, they just walk in and kill. Happy NBK going to fall as well. If they win this round, Fnatic, surely, surely that's going to be it. But... They've roast Pronax just as the bomb goes down, and now it is Crimson and Flusher left. And Flusher's maybe in a good position. Yeah, he's going to peek up just at the right time to get off Smith there. That's a very good peek. And Flusher picking up a double. It's all on Kiyoshima now. 1v2, and they should just hide. They don't have to fight Kiyoshima at all. Yeah, they, exactly. And that's what Flusher's doing right now. He's just trying to peek. Be very quick. Kiyoshima will catch him out, but Crimson is still alive, and Crimson has plenty of time to work with here. Hmm. Oh. Goes back and checks. I was about to say, he's not faking right now, man. 38 kills for Crims, and the round is won for Fnatic. It's the first terrorist round we've seen in the last 12 rounds. <laughs> after yeah. after just the complete terrorist show that the regular time was, it's just a total 180. <clears throat> yeah, because all the rounds in, in overtime are won on the CT side. I, so, I guess it took 15 rounds each, you know, to, to remember how to play CT going into overtime. And now things have kind of returned to returned to normal in some oh, well. weird kind of way. The big question is, can Fnatic now go back on the CT side and actually win their rounds? Because otherwise it's going to be almost like a circus. Good double setup over on Long here. And he's going to miss the shot there, JW. And they're ready to sort of peek him out as soon as that happened. So that's a nice setup for Menu. Oh, and the wall bang through. Oh, not necessarily a wall bang. I keep wanting to say wall bang through smoke. Uh, the spray through the smoke. Shanoxy mm. he catches out Olaf Meister, and this is definitely looking like a solid round here for Envy, barring some kind of major mistake. But as far as Fnatic are concerned, there it is—the opening to take out NBK. Pronax just delivering. Crims takes out Happy, and now we're into Whoa. a two-on-two, -two. just like that in the blink of an eye. The B defense is annihilated. That's a very solid spray from Pronax. I'm really impressed by that shot up at the sniper spot. So 2v2, you're right. There is just a new fresh smoke going down. They even have two HC grenades here to try and keep Envy back. And this is not going to be easy. Envy do have a smoke if they want to try and ninja defuse it. But that's not always as easy as it seems. Background here. Pronax ready and waiting. And he's going to get the first kill. Keep spraying. And triple kill from the Swedish captain is going to leave Smith in a very awkward spot. He goes down to Crimson. That's two rounds in a row here for Fnatic on the T side. They are going to be very happy with this. But yeah, look at this one. The first one's really good, but this is some some good spray. It almost looks like he walks into it, Shox. He sort yeah. of ran into the bullet. Yeah, I think that was Shox. He's just taking that extra step there. And uh, 
not fitting. Well, fitting, I guess, that it is Shoxy, because I'm pretty sure that Shoxy is very annoyed right now. Very annoyed with the team. Has a bit of... Sometimes when things like this don't close out. I mean, I think Shoxy, if anybody, is, like, the most frustrated with when Envy really struggled to close rounds, close out maps yeah. that they that they should be winning. When you get such a terrific start and then you cannot close the map, that, I mean, that's, it's some kind of mental thing that Envy has to deal with. Well, Harry trying to take matters into his own hands, but they really, I mean, losing two rounds in a row like that and then having to play the last round here with Famasis, not exactly encouraging. But they have moved around quite a bit on the map here, and oh, JW, he's aware of it somehow, almost misses the kill then. A little bit sloppy, but he gets the kill on Kyushima regardless. Now, are they going to check the whole site here? Because I think Smith is still over on long waiting. If they can get this last round home, that's almost going to be too much. Great double from Smith, so... Gonna bring it back in their favor. NBK gets the one, but how is all on Pronax here? He's done it before, but this is gonna be tough. Very nice timing with the flash. Oh, does he spot him? No, he does not. Shoxi with the clever positioning. But still, now can the question, you know, can Envy pick up two rounds? Can Envy pick up three rounds on their T side? But I mean, two rounds, it seems. Hell, one round. I mean, that's the thing. Fnatic have just done like the impossible. They picked up two rounds in overtime on T side. Now it just feels like it's such a stretch for Envy to come back and get into this. It definitely does. Um, they just need two rounds in a row here, Fnatic. One good start, one good kill to begin with, and they're going to be off to the race as well. Envy, I mean, they've proven that they can get these terrorist rounds, so it's not completely out of the question. Fnatic, this is what I was talking about earlier. The the, the basically holding sewers and connector mm -hmm. at the same time and working together, but they're gonna walk right into NBK and he doesn't get the follow-up kill. Looked like he could have maybe taken out Crims as well, but now he's being backstabbed in return by Shocks. So this is turning into a really weird situation. Yeah, the Shocks actually <clears throat> catching him off guard right now. Yeah, Crims. Are you kidding me? What? Crims actually gets that spray. That, with the bomb. With yeah, exactly with the bomb. It's like icing on the cake right now. Crims is just grinning ear to ear. He's probably not. He's probably pretty goddamn focused right now, but he goes for another spray, picks up another frag, just doing irreparable damage to the Envy lineup at this point. A man advantage now for Fnatic. They know where the bomb is. Like, this is huge. And JW spots them coming out of Connector again. 45 seconds left, and now Fnatic, they have a decent idea of what's actually happening here. I look at where Flusher is as well, just all the way over by Toilets here. So if they try and move in A now, they're going to get flanked very easily. And time is also running out for them. 30 seconds. They have to make a move. And they can't make any mistakes. They need an entry frag on JW to get in, get the bomb down, and then fight for the defuse after that. 20 seconds now. And already, they're being circled around. You can see how close they all are. I'm really surprised that Flush hasn't pushed yet. Okay, he is now going to push, but it may be too late. Happy gets the kill on JW. 10 seconds left. Flush out. Will he have the angle onto Truck? I think he will, but the bomb gets planted. Oh, and then they line up for him. The oh. perfect angle. Crims and Flusha deliver. Oh man, that looked that looked so good right up until the end. I mean, the fact that they even got in there and got the kill and got the bomb down, that was pretty good. And now it's 24-22. If Fnatic win this next round or any of the next two rounds, uh, that's it. They're going to win overpassing. Quite an upsetting manner. I mean, we did say these were the two best teams in the world and that, you know, Pronex said in an interview beforehand that they even, you know, they're even 50-50 at this point. He doesn't want to call it one way or the other and it's fitting that we end up in triple overtime yeah. to try and decide this first map. Maybe could still be more coming if Envy win the next two rounds, then it's quadruple overtime and why not? <laughs> why not exactly, right? Like, Happy's just going to go beast mode at some point. Crims, though, man. Crims is just the monster for Fnatic. Great flash, but, f I mean, Crims just sits down and sprays down Smiths. Oh, that's a confident pickup from Smiths there. And Sharks will pick up a kill as well. So it is going to be 2v3. Pronax and Flusher left. See if they can uh, prevent... Uh
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It is the second map here in the winner's match. Um, obviously, Fnatic, earlier in the day, they took out LGB. Envy took out Hellraisers. So um, now we've got the winner's <laughs> match coming up. What's up? Are you trying to still make that jacket work? I was trying, dude, except that now, now that I look at it, when I have it zipped up just halfway like this, it looks like I've got a magnificent pair of, of breasts right now, dude. Yeah, I mean, I it's... Mean, um, it's a bit unfortunate, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna switch it over. Just like I like that production. They've got they've got it going on. 
Just uh, instant switch up here. All right, look, it's Envy versus Fnatic. First map in triple overtime. Ended That's up in favor of Fnatic. Now, second map coming up is Fnatic's map pick. That's going to be on cash, and you could bet you Envy they want revenge. Oh, dude, yes. Because apparently the first map was Envy's pick. So the fact that they are brave enough to pick Overpass to flat out destroy the first half and then not close the map and lose in triple overtime... Envy are going to be extremely pissed off right now, but at least at least there's a way back. They can come back into this. They get the CT start on cash, and we do yeah. know that Envy are capable of magical things. That's good news. That's obviously very good news. Um, yeah, it could be fun with the third map here. Why not uh, get that in there? You know, now that we finally have these two teams playing each other again, mm -hmm. it's always it's always good. No, this is this is big, man. This is big. Okay, so Cash, we know that Envy are very capable on it. This is Fnatic's pick, so we know that Fnatic are very capable on it. I mean, they pretty much won Pantamera on this map, so this is now time for Fnatic to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Envy. And Envy, nice setup here. Very standard setup, actually, oh. although they did really commit NBK to his corner. So I guess no surprise there, right? Yeah, this is actually slightly crazy. They, they're they pushing, what, two people out while having a third one in the background? They had essentially no mid control in the beginning. I love this play. Look at this envy. Second for second, they're winning this round. They're just moving forward. And Fnatic haven't got no clue in the world. But Smith is actually going to find target in the middle. Jumps to try and take the shot. And it's going to be MBK with a duel. So taking down one. That's JW going down in the middle. Oh, sorry, no, not in the middle. But Flush is going to fall as well. Shots with a really good double, then a triple. And that's going to be the end of it. I like Smith trying to take the jump, though. Oh, yeah, Cookly dude. style. Trying to channel that inner Kali, yeah. I mean, that inner Olaf as well, you know. I think it was Olaf that he was taking the fight with mid as well, wasn't it? I don't know. Uh, no, so. it was Flusha. It was Flusha. Never mind. I thought that would be some kind of like poetic justice as well, <coughs> you know, because Olaf Meister hits those USP jumping shots. So that that's not meant to be this time, but what is meant to be, um, I mean, just a terrific pistol round there for Envy. And NBK really getting to shine with the duelies. We didn't get to see it so much on, on um, no, Overpass. But tonight, yeah, that was, I mean, that was a solid idea as well. Pushing up that aggressively with two people and a third one to follow. If they had run into a position, they could have maybe tried and overrun it. Got to be careful though. All of Meister will pick up MBK. Shooting a little bit at the edge of the smoke here. And oh no, Happy goes down as well. Smith has to pick it up, but he's going to drop. It's the Tech Nine. Double kill for JW. And he's going to get a third one on Shocks as well. And Kiyoshima is just kind of, he's not even left the bomb site before. It's over. JW ripping NB apart in this round. Pretty much, pretty much, pretty much, pretty much. No subtlety there. No subtlety, nothing clever about it. Just, I'm going to brute force my way onto the site. That's what JW set his sights to, and that's what he did. And, I mean, it all started with NBK just getting caught out in the middle, taking a bullet to the face from Olaf Meister, but JW just coming out of squeak door. Man. There's no stopping that kind of pressure either. Just... That Tech 9, you can keep so much pressure going, you know, on the move, never slowing down. It's so difficult to deal with. Yeah, the Kiyoshima, if he could hold on to the rifle, definitely be very useful for Envy. On Cash, especially if you move around a lot, you can find that opening. Kiyoshima here, six bullets left, and he's going to go down. That's a really, really big deal. That's going to put them back on straight pistols. Probably they will try and force it up, I imagine. Just go for C-set armor or something like that. Yeah, look at happy. Yeah, that's like the standard response at this point once you end up in this situation because you really want to bounce back. But if you don't, then Fnatic are probably going to be at 3-1 before NB can start uh, buying. And the scout on NBK as well. Hmm. Uh, uh, yeah, on NBK. Whoa, I was not expecting that. I would expect you know, Smith, Shoxy, Happy, somebody else to go for it. But NBK decides he wants to be a rebel. Try and, uh, you know, imitate uh, his French compatriot, uh, Kenny. Yeah, well, I like the spot for it. Not, not at all bad. It's a nasty spot. What's really nasty is Shoxy's spot. Don't jump the gun, Shoxy. Don't jump the gun. Sweet mother of God. Gets one. And... Oh, and he gets the other one as well. Two kills for Shoxy. That flank works. Yeah, Kiyoshima. They're fighting through the smoke, and MBK is going to go down. Kiyoshima trying his very best here, but he's out of bullets, and they're coming for him with the knife as well, but it's not going to work. JW giving up a lot here, and it's going to be all on Crims. All alone, his teammates have failed him, and he's going to pick up the one kill here, but he needs a lot more. Still two people left, and he goes down. Envy picking up the round just like that, and 
gotta say, that, that fighter or the smoke was necessary. Like, once they got the kill on NBK with the smoke, why did they keep fighting at all? I... Uh, overconfidence, I think. Overconfidence yeah. on Fnatic's part. I think that was definitely overconfidence from JW's part. There was no reason for him to jump through that smoke, apart from... I mean, obviously, he's thinking, yeah, I've got this in the bag, guaranteed, but I really don't think that there was any reason to go jump into that smoke. No, definitely not. That was some strange... Strange decision making. We're going to be moving into the fourth round. And Fnatic, because of the bomb plant, they can actually make this by work. I think without it, they would have been hard pressed to do that. Molotov here, going to be pretty much perfect. So uh, just denying any kind of early boost coming out from the Fnatic side, including uh, a kind of boost where you just kind of set up and wait. Sometimes you'll do that on those boxes. You just wait until they get the word and then they rush in together, but not going to be anything like that. It looks like it will be actually a B split coming through the vents as well, which is a very powerful push. And Smith goes down in the middle. Olofmeister with that tech nine again. Yeah, it's a real monster. And they're going to start speeding up towards this B side as well. Shoxy playing patient on the side though. This is very good of him. But the other, his rotations, I mean, he, they have to come in through Sky. They're going to be just a second too late. And Shoxy just stands his ground, takes the fight, and gets gunned down by JW. NBK trying to time it out, see if he can't catch somebody getting over to that B site, but it is not meant to be. Great oh. smokes here by Fnatic, just keeping the doors closed. Look at Olofmeister coming up from behind us while well, he's basically flanking the whole team, so they're trying to retake, and all of a sudden, that's Tech 9. <laughs> and that's not going to be fun. Happy 1v2, he could try and do this, actually. He's got the health for it, but he's going to have to move super quick, and he's essentially walking voluntarily into a crossfire here, looking for the kill. He's going to get it on Pronax. As he said, is out as well. He has not got a kit, so committing to this full time is not going to be easy. Olaf Meister charging on down, and that will be the kill with the kit. Could have worked out. With the kit, it could have. I think that's what Olaf Meister, Olaf Meister coming that fast, basically, he wasn't sure if there was a kit or not. So he had to make perfectly sure. The thing is that if Happy comes off the bomb at that point, it's already lost. Yeah. So he has to commit to that defuse at that point. Uh, so. so if we look at the graph right now, it's, uh, it's just back and forth. And it's going to continue like that, at least, because now Envy, they've gone for another force. It's just it, the first team to break, basically. The first oh. team to, to avoid the eco. Or to commit to the eco, yeah. rather. Yeah, they're going to come up heavily on the losing side. They'll mm. end up losing probably twice in a row, and that's going to be tricky. Happy being traded there, but MBK is there with a scout to take down JW. So a very interesting scenario here as Crims drops down to 23 health. That's the pistols. Once again, 5-7 being put into play here. And it's not too surprising that we're seeing this between these two teams, because like we said earlier, these are basically the two best teams in the world at utilizing pistols. So every time they buy a pistol, it's still pretty damn good. It might as well be a buy round. Like it, it feels like that most of the time. The amount of damage that they're able to inflict, it might as well be a buy round. There's no such thing as Ecos anymore if these teams buy Kevlar. And look at Shoxy's position right now. Does not realize. Does he realize? Oh, he gets spotted. Just a second too late there, Shoxy. And Flush has now got him boxed in. Shoxy just has to run and gun. And Shoxy's going to get the kill with the 5-7. Yeah, oh, a little bit of hesitation. Shoxy picks up the second kill on Orfmeister. And it's on Crims here. 1v3. He's going to go down to Kiyoshima. And I actually think that highlights one of the reasons why the pistols are as good as they are. Because you can just run and shoot with it like that. Mm -hmm. Whereas Crims with the M4 really can't. And you're so fast with yeah, it as so well. Yeah, so fast. Compared to having a rifle in your hand, you know, there, there's def you're definitely slower with the rifle, <clears throat> and you also lose accuracy with pistols. You can just yeah. run and gun all day long. Yeah, it's really, really powerful like that. So, uh, sixth round coming up now. We're back uh, once more, even though it looks like Fnatic. I mean, especially once they spotted Shoxy, I thought that was it. Like, they would have been able to clean up the middle, and then they would have had a, a man up. Now, it's the Tech 9 rush towards B, very common here. And the position that they're in inside this B bomb site, well, Shoxy needs help from... Uh, from Checkered, and he's going to get that, I think. Yeah, Shoxy, not sure if he's going to realize exactly what's coming at him, but... He's in a much better position now than he just was. This is all about the element of surprise for Fnatic. And I'm not sure if they realize there's somebody up in vents, but there's Kyushima picking up the first one. JW instantly catches him out, however. And not sure if that gun dropped down. If they have to go for a counter boost, they actually have to counter boost up there to get Kyushima's gun. And Happy is waiting. Happy, does he hit the timing? Yes, he does. Snaps onto Olafmeister, and he spots them all in Checkered as well. Oh, but he ends up going down nonetheless. Shocks here. And Smith's coming in strong. So now Crims is all alone. And this is looking like Fnatic are fi oh, sorry, Envy are finally going to manage to stabilize the game just a little bit by winning two in a row here. Mm, Crims, uh, well, we already have the rotation. Good timing here by NBK. He's going to make it back just in the nick of time before Crims can get onto this site. Should be clean. 
but it is not. And now Crims going for a bit of the run and gun. See if he can't put some pressure on NBK. He will do just that. Changes it up, but NBK reacts in time. That was definitely too close for comfort there. But there it is. This is the breaking point. Yeah. So they stabilize on the on the French side. And that is going to be the seventh round now starting off. So they're at least going to get one round where they can breathe and relax. But then actually the round loss bonus from Fnatic probably going to help them out quite a bit, especially if they get the, uh, the bomb plant here. But I think even without it, they're going to go for a buy regardless. So uh, uh, Yeah, just like one round of eco is pretty much all they're going to take. And JW very quickly up here onto the boost spot. Not sure if he got spotted there, however. But he is going to try and play the angle. Goes jumping and... Man, he makes it out of there in one piece. That's incredible. Didn't get spotted jumping down from the cinder blocks there. So I'm um, only the one kill going in so far. <laughs> Kyushima. No, Q, put it onto the boost. Oh, now they get spotted. Now they know this is going to be a mid rush, probably up to short. And Smith's just way out in the open, gets caught out by JW. Nicely done there by JW, at least inflicting a little bit of damage here to the French lineup. Now, do they drop him in AWP? And there it is. Okay, so Happy drops him the AWP, so Smith now has the sniper rifle. On Fnatic's side, however, no AWP picked up. And this is in large part due to them not having that bomb plant. I don't think any of them had enough to make it. Yeah, 47. Well, actually, JW could have gone for just a straight glass cannon AWP. But looks like they want to favor some nades and rifles instead. Two smokes on Fnatic side, so could be used, especially if you want to go B. You do need to smoke upper and lower, but Crims is going to go down now. They're flashing their way through here, Fnatic. They need to get in back quick into the game and stop uh, Fnatic, or sorry, Envy from building too much of an economy. They've put shocks low, and this grenade pretty going to finish him off. No, it's a little bit too far back, and it doesn't quite hit him enough. And now that's going to be a complete cleanup here. Envy just stopping Fnatic over at B. Olof Meister in the middle. Maybe he could get a kill or two in here. And that's worth something. Oh, Olafmeister gets a double kill, takes out NBK, who was actually in a bit of a cheeky spot. Not often that we use that, uh, or we see that boost spot used. So oh, that's not too bad there. Olafmeister making this expensive. He's going to drop Kyoshima down to half. Shocks, he can't really help out too much either. He's only got 11 HP. So 44 seconds here, and Olafmeister still has plenty of time to inflict some damage. It'd be nice if he could pick up one more kill. Makes such a big difference there in this. Go. Kiyoshima going down. And because Shox is so low, if he finds the right angle, that's actually going to be really creepy. He makes a bit of noise like he's running towards middle. And then he goes back up here, but he does walk into a flashbang. 20 seconds left here. 